नमस्तुते आत्मज्योति प्रदीप्ताय ब्रह्मज्योति नमस्तुते ब्रह्मज्योति प्रदीप्ताय गुरुज्योति नमस्तुते ओ शांति 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 थैंक यू गुड आफ्टरनून टू ईच वन ऑफ यू रेस्पेक्टेड चेयरपर्सन ऑफ दिस सेशन प्रोफेसर गणेश प्रसाद दास रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर दिलीप कुमार महंत यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ कलकत्ता रेस्पेक्टेड प्रोफेसर लक्ष्मीकांत पाढ़ी नॉर्थ बेंगल यूनिवर्सिटी माय डियर स्टूडेंट्स and other participants today we are going to organize our second session that the icpr sponsored webinar series on the occasion of indian philosophers day today we have two papers one paper is uh, that uh, some introductory remarks about sri aurobindo's philosophy and his view on this status of the world by professor dilip kumar mahanta and is indian philosophy mystical by professor lakshmikant padhi i welcome all of you and i request our uh, coordinator of the program francis bala to give a short, short introduction about our guests thank you dr sir very good afternoon to all respected uh, professor ganesh prasad das for the today's chair person st mechodi department of philosophy vikram dev autonomous college jaipur and all the participants present over here it's my pleasure to introduce professor dilip kumar mahanta Uh, Dr. Dilip Kumar Mahanta is the senior senior most professor of philosophy at the University of Calcutta. He is former vice chancellor of the University of Kalyani and also the first vice chancellor of the Sanskrit College and University of Kolkata. He was an associate. of inner university center of ugc at institute of advanced study simla he was also awarded the us government of state scholarship at the university of california santa barbara uh, he was a visiting professor uh, visiting lecturer fellowship at the university of florida and william pet uh, petton fellowship at the school of philosophy university of Birmingham, UK. Professor Mahanta, a former member of Indian uh, Council of Philosophical Research, New Delhi, and presently uh, Joint Secretary, Indian Philosophical Congress. He is the recipient of John uh, Jacobson Award for his research uh, in 2016 at Warsaw by the Society of Universal mm -hmm. Dialogue. for his research contribution on religion pluralism and inter religious dialogue he is also recipient of the prestigious award arya manjushri saman in 2022 for his original contribution to the buddhist philosophy by indian society for buddhist studies he uh, edited four books and author 15 uh, books and 80 research articles mainly on uh, classical indian philosophy and comparative religion with academic invitation professor mahanta visited many countries like us uk poland greece china vietnam sri lanka bangladesh etc he knows uh, sanskrit and pali apart from bengali and english uh, today professor mahanta uh, speak on some introductory remarks about uh, sri arabindo's philosophy and his 
give on the status of the world so on behalf of the department of philosophy i once again welcome you sir uh, to this lecture series today uh, we have what uh, we have, we have with us professor lakshmikant padhi uh, and lakshmikant padhi is a professor and formerly head of department of philosophy university of north bengal uh, he was also a former registrar at the university of north bengal and lakshmikant padhi is a professor and former head of the department of philosophy uh, university of north bengal uh, siliguri he has received ba and ma from uttam university bhubneshwar and mphil phd from jadavpur university kolkata uh, his specialization area are practical ethics environmental ethics sustainable development animal ethics virtue ethics and philosophy of religion he is presently working on philosophy of religion the mahabharata and dharma shastra apart from his academic activities he is a live member of the journal of icpr new delhi and and listed under the scheme of dissemination of knowledge of icpr new delhi he is also a live member of indian philosophical congress and a member of book club i i s similar and member of afro asian philosophical congress so uh, today professor padhi will speak on each indian philosophy mystical so sir once again i welcome uh, to this lecture series and may i now invite professor uh, dilip kumar mahanto to yeah. sir check kari okay uh, sorry uh, sir may i uh, now request professor ganesh prasad das to chair the session sir please thank you so much uh, barla uh, good afternoon namaskar to one and all over there the convener of unmute karun sir unmute karun ha theek ach theek unmute hai sir the convener of the seminar dr lakshman the coordinator francis barla the celebrated speaker of this session professor dk mahanta and professor lakshmikant padi the lord and attending and dear students bikram dev college actually has designed this national seminar to celebrate the indian philosophy day in four sessions over four days the aim is not to create any hurdle in the normal functioning of academics and it is the second day today and i welcome you one and all to a fruitful deliberation this afternoon evening yesterday let me recapitulate yesterday gp das that is me spoke on the life and philosophy of acharya surendras dasupta it came out that snd was a yogi in his own way and in a unique way sri aurobindo whose life and philosophy dr mahanto will discuss is also an accredited yogi he is a prolific writer volumes of writings are to his credit 
that include great works on Indian philosophy and culture. Now, without loss of time, I would request our honorable speaker, Professor Manta, to speak on Sri Aurobindo. <coughs> Namaskar. Good afternoon. I express my gratitude to Professor Das, who actually inspired all of us, either in academic way or in personal way. Rather, doing philosophy among us. I thank profusely the philosophy fraternity of Bikram Dev College, Jaipur, Odisha, for undertaking such an effort in the name of celebrating Indian Philosophers Day. First, what is Indian philosophy? By Indian philosophy, usually we mean the classical Indian philosophy. Then it is, if we understand in this way, that it would be something dead. Philosophy is a living subject, we have to recontextualize it, reinterpret it. And philosophy is the most confusing word. So very often, unless we clarify it, it becomes again problematic. The issues are very nearly problematic. It's rightly said by Professor Das that our academic philosopher S. N. Das Gupta was a yogi in a very technical sense. He has elaborated this yesterday. I had the great fortune to listen to him, thanks to the philosophy of technology. Because the philosophy of technology says, if you do not accept it today, then you will have to pay for this without getting benefit of it. I congratulate the philosophy fraternity of Risa because they are trying to utilize this philosophical message. As said by Aurobindo in Synthesis of Yoga, all life is yoga. All life is a yoga of nature. The philosophy, <coughs> as said by Dasgupta, may be taken in two senses. One is what we can know non erosniously is indicated by our philosophy. And in this sense, this the Western term philosophy comes very close to Indian understanding and of philosophy as we see in Sarvadarsana Sangra and Saradarsana Samuchara. The other way of understanding philosophy is Muksha Shastra. There are 14 Shastras, you know, built in Indian traditions. They are as a Muksha Shastra. Now, in both the ways, we can understand what we call, in non-technical term, Indian philosophy. <clears throat> and Dasgupta was a yogi, no doubt, but at the same time, he was an academic philosopher also, a teacher of philosophy. But today, we are trying to speak on the philosophy of another yogi. He was not an academic philosopher. And he is one of the 
mostly misunderstood thinkers of 20th century. There are different views about his what we call philosophy, although he himself never claimed him to be a philosopher. He says, I'm a poet, I'm a politician, I'm a yogi. When we say Aurobindo's philosophy, see Aurobindo's philosophy, it is again problematic. Therefore, <clears throat> Instead of devoting this introductory lecture to any of the specific issues he dealt in, I would prefer to give some clarifications, a general clarifications for understanding or reading. Or of in those writings. Many people say many things, but as Aurobindo Vasu reported us, Aurobindo was not so well versed in science. Not even he has very much likings about these classics, all cl classical philosophers of the West. Even Aristotle was a disliking to him. Therefore, when we say he <clears throat> tries to reconcile both East and West, there is a caution again. That is why I prefer this introductory remarks about in what sense he is a philosopher. And at the same time, I also try to say something, if time permits, uh, about Sri Aurobindo's view on the status of the world. A traditional way of understanding world, by the object of philosophy, according to many interpreters like Prabhu Dr. Shastri and others, that world is an illusion. On the other hand, we see in Aurobindo, especially the Aurobindo, Radha Krishnan, Vivekananda, Tagore, all of them regard this world as real. So again, there are controversy of interpretations. That is why, uh, in addition to these introductory remarks of uh, the use of the word philosophy or in Aurobindo's writings or Aurobindo as a philosopher, uh, I, I, I was interested to in group this. Friends, <clears throat> Sri Aurobindo is a mystery to many thinkers. His genius has many appreciators. There are genuine admiration for his belief and his pioneering political work and leadership, both in India and abroad. But very few know far less understand what he was doing at Pondicherry. How could we address this situation? But it is indeed true that the appreciation of greatness by us adds nothing to it. On the contrary, it is only a proof of our ability, our ability to appreciate. I feel well uh, when should I write a paper? Because the motto is that to judge whether I myself have understood it or not, then only I write. It is not that I know and I convey this to others. This is my personal feeling. Only to present something to others, co philosophers, to understand whether I am correct or whether I am erroneous in my way of understanding because co-philosophers who are in front of me are my mirrors. It is not that the speaker knows better, but it is true that I have an agony, the speaker has an agony in his own understanding. 
and sharing the agony. So doing philosophy is a corporate work in this sense. It, it goes with only cooperations from others. And in fact, those who are teachers of philosophy, if, if we are sincere, we must admit that we learn from our, more from our students than from our teachers. To be open and clear in our understanding, we have the proper sense of values. To be attracted by the compelling force of greatness. All these does not credit us instead of increasing the luster of one who is great like Aurobin. Without this modest way of understanding, <clears throat> It is difficult, very difficult, to say anything describing the thought world of Sri Aurobindo. Friends, every human being has great interest in the world we live in. And we know in our experience that it is real. Question, but but uh, a question that disturbs us is sometimes as follows, as I uh, referred also: Is the world ultimately illusion? Scholars of Indian philosophy are divided in response to this question. According to Shankara, the world is illusory in a specific and technical sense, not as usually we use, according to Shankara, the world is false. This is not true. And again, according to Sri Aurobindo, the world is real and not illusory in a different technical sense. So in doing philosophy today, especially of Aurobindo and Shankara, we will have to take the senses are very important. It is argued that Sri Aurobindo's interpretation is only an extensional interpretation of contextualizing the Vedic Upanishadic philosophy in his own time when development of science has positive impact on philosophical thinking and it is called Purnadvaita integral non-dualism. We intend to say a few words about his philosophy in general and about his understanding of absolute as Satchidananda and his theory of evolution in particular. And my proposed discussion is primarily based on his Aurobindo's own works, especially the life divine, the synthesis of yoga, Human, the human cycle, Hour of God, a posthumous publication, Yases in the Gita, the foundations of Indian culture. And secondarily, I have chosen only few thinkers, K.D. Shetna, Aspects of Sri Aurobindo, Haridas Choudhury's Philosophy of Integralism, S.K. Mitra, an S.K. Moitra, an introduction to philosophy of Aurobindo, and Aurobindo Vasu's Sri Aurobindo, the poet, yogi, and philosopher, published in 2011. Sri Aurobindo <coughs> reinterpreted, reconstructed, and revaluated the entire structure of Vedic Upanishadic philosophy. His philosophy is literally integral in the sense that it is both profound and comprehend. As said by Kalidas Bhattacharya, he said Kesi Bhattacharya's philosophy is profound but not comprehend. And Radha Krishnan philosophy is comprehensive but not as profound as Kesi Bhattacharya. Kesi Bhattacharya mentioned in his Rajin ideas that if India is anything to give to the world, this is its philosophy and culture. Unfortunately, today, our government is not paying much attention to the cultivation of philosophy 
in academic discipline as an academic discipline in India. You see about the ICP, there is no permanent, you know, chairman again. So whatever is possible in our own way, as my friends in Odisha are doing, this is another way of surviving. Rather surviving with our thinking. Let noble thoughts come to us from different directions. Sri Aurobindo is, in this sense, is one of the finest interpreters of modern Indian philosophy, who by his rare multidimensionality of his genius, astoundingly remarkable profoundity of intellectual acumen, creative thought inside, gifted with the spirit of synthesis, discovered our own cultural roots after encountering the wisdom of the non-Indian traditions. He has no philosophy, if by it we mean academic philosophy. With theories, what we do in academic philosophy? We make theories and counter theories. But his massive structure of metaphysics is only an insight into reality. In his own words, let me quote a, uh, some uh, uh, a portion uh, uh, from one of his letters written to <coughs> his disciple, Dilip Kumar Rai. I quote, Aurobindo wrote, I had only to write down in terms of intellect, all that I had observed and come to know in practicing yoga daily. And philosophy was there automatically. But that is not being a philosopher, unquote. It's from, the extract is from the letter. Now then how to understand it? Very difficult. He himself is denying I'm not a philosopher. It comes automatically. Now I feel that we must understand the word philosopher in three different senses. And we shall try to see whether this, whether Aurobindo's philosophy can be put in any of the sense. There are three different senses in which the term philosopher can be used. I call it a narrow sense. In narrow sense, means, it means a group of thinkers who do not have any realization of truth but have the interest in comprehensive analysis of truth discovered by the poets and seers. They hope that their analysis of the composition of those who had first-hand experience of truth or God realization will enable them and their readers to experience the truth in future. In some cases, they have some awareness of it. As I begin with S. N. Dasgupta's remark, that what we can know non erroneously is indicated by philosophy. In this sense, Sri Aurobindo is a half philosopher. I repeat, in this sense, Sri Aurobindo is a half philosopher. We see his rational analysis of what he has realized in yogic practice. In his writing, am I audible, sir? Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are very audible. Okay, thank you. But in that narrower sense, there is another sense I call narrower sense. A philosopher is one who has no realization of truth, but one who one who gives argument for a theory or a counter theory, and proceeds through analysis which is traditionally known as Buddhi Balapreksha Vyakha. I can't translate it into English. It is a Sanskrit term mainly used in the, about the writings of Sri Arsha. Buddhi Balapreksha Vyakha. And this type of a person is usually called an academic philosopher. For example, as we see in our academic institutions today, professors of philosophy, students of philosophy, all are uh, academic philosophers. 
in this sense sri aurobindo is not a philosopher he is not a philosopher in the academic sense still there is a broad sense in which the term philosopher can be used in indian language <coughs> he is called patyadarshi a seer of truth a poet in india is called krantodarshi and there is no essential difference between a tattvadarshi and a kanto uh, krantodarshi such a person is one who has realized the truth either partially or fully and in the light of this act of seeing of truth face to face for the benefit of mankind he expresses in rational language what is being realized by him sometimes in mystical experience as supernatural truth which has impact on individual society and the state such as the truth had been seen by the seer poets of the vedas in this broad sense sri aurobindo is certainly one of the greatest philosophers now according to his own admission he was first a poet and we can now argue he was a krantodarshi and if he is a krantodarshi he is also a tattvadarshi and secondly he admits himself as a politician and later he became a yogi but he is a philosopher in the traditional life of indian thinkers as tattvadarsh he is called a yogi also in a technical sense ego in this technical sense points to the means of achieving the direct knowledge of man's true be ego is primarily according to aurobindo is an organ of knowledge the practice of yoga not only can give direct experience of atman but also provides man with very direct and minute knowledge of the non atman to which body life mind etc and It is this detailed knowledge of the non-atman aspect which is necessary for liberation from that which prevents us from having direct realization of atman. I quote: All the founders of the great Indian system of philosophy were yogis and mystics, and also uh, and those who came after them. elaborated explained and interpreted the founders principles but did not really add anything new to their insights into the nature of reality the fact that he depends on his yogic practice as materials of his integral idealism could not in any way raise doubts about his being a philosopher as indian tradition thinks of a darshanik unquote said by aurobindo basu as sri aurobindo said in essays on the gita i am quoting from two passages <coughs> where he dealt directly with the concept of philosophy i quote aurobindo philosophy is only a way of formulating to ourselves intellectually their in their essential significance the psychological and physical facts of existence and their relation to any ultimate reality that may exist and all philosophy is concerned with the relations between two things the fundamental truth of existence and the forms in which existence presents itself to our experience the deepest experience shows that the fundamental truth is truth of the spirit the other is the truth of life truth of form and shaping force and living idea and action and hope 
in the light of this explanation let us move further to see how sri aurobindo's philosophy contributes to the development of india's philosophical thought in india characteristically it is said philosophy is synthetic but again i want to give a caution here because this does not mean that it is devoid of analytic characteristic too always we have in our mind the way western categorization of synthetic and analytic to understand the nature of the world we shall have to analyze critically what is given before us there are great deal of logical controversies refutations and partial support of their of other philosophers doctrines there are also frank and deep appreciation and even instances of acceptance thought partial of whatever is true in other philosophies and sri aurobindo's philosophy i understand as i understand is no exception in this respect so there is not only sin way of synthesis but also analysis is there very rational and critical analysis if you especially in the life divine if we see the theory of evolution therefore it is not as such that it only reconciles the synthesis and there is no acumen of analyticity this is not true in his magnum opus the life divine sri aurobindo reconciles the traditional vedantic varieties of philosophic thought such as advaita vishishta advaita dvaita into purnatvaita which in english we can say integral non dualism now for the advaitins <coughs> brahman alone is real on the other hand vishishta advaitin say the supreme reality is divine personality and it is endowed with all auspicious qualities shuguna samannaya and doitins again speak of the distinct reality of individual selves and the one supreme lord to whom they attribute love and devotion but in aurobindo's writings the esoteric meaning of the mantras of the vedas is elucidated from a mystical flair and this philosophy baffles all attempts to be easily intelligible to our ordinary thought evolves from meditative experience <clears throat> his new interpretation based on inner symbolism clears out confusion and misunderstanding regarding truth realized by the vedic seers naturally <coughs> orobindo unlike the purana tradition speaks of evolution instead of creation sri orobindo in his integral non dualism therefore reconciles the chief currents of indian spiritualism with dominant streams of western culture by his creative vision into the exquisitely elegant structure of harmony we get a marvelous synthesis of the east and the west which permits the logic of the infinite and the logic of the of finite they appear side by side if you read sabitri one uh, somewhere he said i am uh, not a bhakta nor a yogi but in me are tool in the hands of lord you know it is very difficult therefore to categorize it as either advaita or advaita or anything the first one has no that is the logic of infinite what it is then it has no limitation of possibility <clears throat> infinite possibility modality whereas the second one is conditioned by limited possibility and modal contrary to the idea of creation as tradi traditionally conceived in eastern dominated western philosophy creation or ex nihilo something out of nothing sri so aurobindo speaks of theory of evolution he does not believe in this creation 
it is the pivot around which all his metaphysical creeds revolve. And this theory of evolution has a few unique characteristics that radically differentiates it from the so called popular varieties of theories of evolution. <clears throat> his view on Maya therefore appears only in connection with his theory of evolution. And this is required to maintain his non dualistic view of reality along with the reality of the world of multiplicity, as we see around us. Supracosmic, transcendent, and cosmic. Each is equally real for him. He developed a vision of integral reality in which the Nirguna Brahma and the world, Jagat, are perceived in the unity of self evolving and self revealing absolute and thus his philosophy is known as the integral non dualism matter for him is implicitly conscious apparent contradiction is a part of nature's general method nature is working towards reconciliation through evolutionary process therefore in life divine we read i quote life evolves out of matter mind out of life because they are already there. Matter is a form of veiled life. Life is a form of veiled mind. May not mind be a form and veil of a higher power, the spirit which would be supramental in its nature. Unquote. Man's highest aspiration would then only indicate the gradual unveiling of the spirit within. The preparation of a higher life upon earth. His idea of evolution allows him to reject the illusory interpretation of the world. To read the illusory interpretation of Shankara's philosophy in Prabhudartha Shastri's work published in 1919. According to Sri Aurobindo, man occupies the central position in evolutionary way as it gives a ground for the possibility of a passage from an unconscious to a conscious evolution. There is no reason to believe that this evolutionary process will stop with man. Man's urge towards spirituality is an undeniable indication of the inner drive of the spirit within towards emergence, its insistence towards the next step of its manifestation. There is an upward transformation in the evolutionary process of from matter, life, psyche, which is called soul also, mind, and mind you see, higher mind, illuminated mind, intuitive mind, and then comes over mind, and then super mind. <clears throat> from mind to super mind, there seems to be bridge through higher mind, illuminated mind, and intuitive mind, and over mind. The ultimate stage is the evolution of the supermind. When this takes place, nature becomes transformed into supernature and human beings into gnostic beings. Here we see a radical change in evolutionary process because from this stage onward, evolution is through knowledge and not through ignorance. <clears throat> so there is a march from ignorance to knowledge. There is no qualitative difference, only quantitative difference. Therefore, like Shankara, you'd say the Ajnana is Bhavarupa. It's not like by no, Nayai no, goodness, Ajnana is the absence of Jnana. No. The fourfold process of ascent explores the hidden consciousness truth gifted with higher spiritual light that causally affects the supramental mod modifications as a series of some limitations of the consciousness. All these degrees are grades of energy substance of the spirit. Aravinda gives a philosophical <coughs> interpretation of the theory of evolution, which the Western idea of evolution fails to give. 
the western idea of evolution is limited to the physical and the biological data of nature but it is blind to the explanation of our being it cannot explain adequately how mental consciousness could come into being from physical stuff the modern scientists explain the howness of evolution but they fail to give us an answer regarding the <clears throat> whyness of it sri so aurobindo realizes that we are bound to suppose that consciousness force or spirit must be involved from the beginning in the whole manner whole of matter life mind and all are latent inactive or concealed active powers in all the progression of material energy now unless we assume this previous involution we cannot justify and explain the evolutionary process at all evolution does not produce anything new rather it unveils what was already there he views if therefore a philosopher only sees he is the seer he views the entire evolutionary process from a spiritual perspective and it is spiritual evolution because the spirit is hidden in the world order and it is an evolution guided by the spirit the movement of descent and ascent constitute a but a circular movement and man belongs to a stage in this order of cycle evolution without involution is therefore unbelievable it is a sort of home sickness of the spirit and the final result of this is the supreme manifestations of satchidananda he said existence consciousness and delight now here it is to be noted that the absolute of sri aurobindo is not the same as the absolute in hegel's philosophy the absolute of hegel is self distinguishing and self objectifying principle of self consciousness for hegel the world is a form of self externalization of the absolute thought evolves they are dialectical logic follows the principle in its evolution for hegel reality is thought but uh, this uh, thought uh, does not change its character it is essentially relative it is essentially uh, it is it is uh, for hegel reality is thought but this thought does not cha change its character because it is essentially relative and cannot give rise to the absolute but see for sri aurobindo <clears throat> the absolute is integrally conceived and it is at once static and dynamic transcendent and immanent <laughs> therefore if we just look up to this we see this aurobindo's philosophy is no academic philosophy <clears throat> what is said earlier about the nature of academic philosophy i fear sri aurobindo's thought may not be included within it <clears throat> in other words our narrowly conceived scope of the term philosophy cannot include his thought however by philosophy sri aurobindo does not mean a hard intellectual enterprise or a fascinating frivolity of thought for him philosophy is an integral view of life as human life is a multi dimensional unity it is to be viewed as a whole and for that reason philosophy should aim at integration and unity of experience neither barren intellectualism nor extreme externalist outlook has any place in integral non dualism the standpoint of philosophy must be all inclusive and harmonious and truth must be non one sided he said philosophy dealing with the principles of beings must come to perceive the principles of all these principles 
and investigate its nature, attributes, and essential working. Philosophy for Sri Aurobindo, although is not capable of securing spiritual realization, it is an indispensable aid to such realization. As Professor K. D. Satna, Satna Amol Kiran summarized, I quote from Amol Kiran, he said, Aurobindo's philosophy is not abstract logic spanning from a few principles of thought mixed with a few data of ordinary observation. <clears throat> it is only the intellectual elucidations of the systematization of concrete and direct experience of realities lying beyond the mere mind. It is but a mental picture of what is wished by the inmost consciousness in its yogic penetration of the subliminal and supralimidal, unquote. Now, this is the first part of my deliberations. With this up, <clears throat> in the light of what has been said, now we can concentrate on his view on the status of the world. The world, therefore, for Aravinda is the self-manifestations of pure being. It is, <coughs> it is, it is a free creative act of the part of the on, on the part of the absolute spirit, an act which is eternal, which expresses the mystically latent power of self-determination of the absolute, and which symbolizes the absolute's delight of mutable becoming or variable manifestation. The supreme reality, Satchidananda, is manifesting itself through its evolution, a joyful play, Leela of the Absolute. The world is not the essential truth of Absolute, but phenomenal truth of its free multiplicity and infinite superficial mutability and not truth of its fundamental and immutable unity. I find it is not of much difference with the original text of Sankara's philosophy here. So it is <laughs> terminating one as illusory, another is real or non-illusory. This way of interpreting sometimes are misleading. It demands another whole lecture, so I have not uh, dealt with this point here. Now, Maya in Aurobindo's philosophy, he ex Maya is used in the sense of cosmic illusion and becomes meaningless. He said it is a mere fantasy. If the world expresses a great creative motive, if it is manifestation of the divine life into the finite life, then Aurobindo says Maya is the in the sense of cosmic illusion becomes meaningless. He does not want to deny the joy and pain, the struggle and effort of human life, like a Buddhist or a Mayavadin of Sankara's type, some interpretations I'm referring, and takes them as real as Brahm. As we see in their life divide, I'm to justify my, my analysis, I, I'm, I'm quoting life divide. He said, quote, all the stress of struggle and effort, success and failure, joy and suffering, the mixture of ignorance and knowledge would be the experience needed for the soul, mind, life, and physical part to grow into the full light of a spiritual perfected being." Unquote. Sri Aurobindo firmly believes that the world expresses a force in truth, obeys a predetermining will, realizes an original formative self-vision. He thus rejects the interpretation of the world as some post-Shankara philosopher interpreted Shankara's philosophy that universe is a mere illusion. Some philosophers consider the status of the world as illusory, just like dream or hallucination. The world for Aravinda is only an appearance and therefore should not be taken as real. It is called Maya in the sense of something artificial. It seems to be real, but not actually real as Brahm, or apart from Brahm. Such a view is called by Aurobindo the world negation theory. And therefore, this world negation theory is rejected by Aurobindo. And 
uh, there are two arguments uh, we can read in his writings. I, I just uh, there in the short campus, uh, I, I am trying to trying to uh, explain these arguments. One argument I call analogy of dream, dream life argument. Uh, this is there in the Basi of Sankara and poor Sankara philosophers. This is dream life argument. This has been rejected by Europe. He questioned the argument given by Put Shankara philosophers from the analogy of dream to explain the world of experience as well. For him, <clears throat> for him, it fails to establish the falsity of the world. The events in dream are no longer be a mere unreal object, yes, they are all only a transcript of reality, a system of symbol images and other awake experience of the world is similarly not real but only a transcript of reality in other words our awakening experience are series of collection of symbol images but in the theory of evolution the only reality is an indeterminable featureless pure existence brahman who cannot be rendered by a transcript, a crowd of symbols or images. Again, when it is said that dream is felt to be unreal because it ceases and has no further validity, when we pass from one state of consciousness to other, our normal state. This reasoning is not sound because we know that there are different states of consciousness. Each has its own reality. But when a state of consciousness fades back as soon as we pass into another state, it would not prove the reality of the state in which we exist now and the unreality of the other which we have left behind us. It is equally possible to regard them as three different orders of one reality. So the first argument, dream life argument, is rejected by Sri Aurobindo. The second argument of by the illusionist philosophers, the analogy of hallucination, and this argument is also rejected by Aurobindo. Uh, very summarily, I am trying to put it here. <laughs> there are two aspects of hallucination. One is mental, other is visual. When you see an image of things where it does not exist. This is a case of visual hallucination as the case of a mirage. When we see a snake in a piece of rope, it is an instance of mental illusion. Now, Yorobindo explains that in each case, either it is visual or mental, the illusion is not an image of something quite non-existent, but an image of something which exists elsewhere, where it has been imposed by the mind's error or by a sense error. The li in life divine, this argument based on the, the argument based on the analogy is rejected. Or I'm going to say it is unhelpful. I'm quoting, it would be valid only if our image of the universe were a falsity reflecting a true universe, which is not here but elsewhere, and else if it were a false imagined manifestations of the reality, replacing in the mind or covering with its distorted resemblance a true manifestation. Unquote. What we see is that the one manifests itself into a reality. Of numberless forms and powers. Sri Aurobindo admits that there is no doubt that the process of such manifestation, the process of uh, uh, the such manifestation is a mystery. He also calls it a magic, uh, but altogether he denies explaining it as a magic of the unreal. Rather, it is the magic of the real. All mental errors and illusions are only a wrong perception of reality, a wrong relation, which is the result of ignorance. 
But the cosmic illusion is not of such nature. Cosmic illusion imposes figures happening that are pure invention on a reality in which there never were, never will be any happening names or figures. Our mind, the parent of these illusions, is a seeker and a discoverer of truth, possibilities, and actualities, but it is limited in knowledge. The original consciousness from which mind must be a derivation, on the contrary, is not limited like mind. It is cosmic in its scope. It is free from all ignorance. Rather, it opens to no error. <clears throat> now, this way of understanding the status of the world has direct bearing on its socio political philosophy. As is said in the Karma Yugids, I quote the religion which embraces science and faith, Hism, Christianity, Mohammedanism, and Buddhism. And yet is none of this is that to which the world spirit moves. For him, all religions are seen as approaches to a single truth. All philosophies as divergent viewpoints looking at different sides of the single of a single reality. All sciences meet together in a supreme science. For this, much would depend on us. Who by their self evolution or self transcended into a higher mold have qualified to be leaders of the spiritual march. In this way, Sri Aurobindo has shown adequate light on men and collective men. Uh, anyway, this, uh, of course, is a subject of separate and elaborate discussion. So I put this as outside of. Uh, my deliberations. I am not explaining this point. Let me conclude. Uh, oh, already it is over. Almost. Uh, let me conclude. Then. Therefore, according to Sirobindo, the supreme reality manifests itself and reveals its truth nature in countless numbers of ways. It takes innumerable forms and reveals its powers in infinite ways and enjoys itself through its creation. For Lila. He discards the illusionist interpretation of the world. For him, Brahman, the supreme reality, is that which that which being known, all is known. But in the illusionist solution, it is that which is being known. All becomes unreal and incomprehensible mystery. Sri Aurobindo affirms that the cosmic universe is real and not illusion. Eternal static and the dyna eternal dynamic are both true to the reality. Both the immobile as well as the uh, immobile and mo as well as mobile Brahman represent the same reality. The Aurobindo emphasizes the reality of the empirical world because it is essentially equal with the supreme reality. It does not subscribe to the view of uh, Shankara, the status of the world is as good as an illusion as interpreted by some post Shankara philosophers. He holds the reality and sanctity of the empirical world in which the supreme divinity is immanent. His interpretation is not only an extensional interpretation of contextualizing, uh, interpretation of contextualizing the issue of his time when. At the development of science's positive impact on philosophical thinking, but also an addition of new meaning to uh, the tradition of Vedic Upanishadic culture. He gave us <coughs> a message of growth from within in response to the influences from without. In other words, it is a message for India. To act in its own kind after its proper dharma in the right measures of importance, its spiritual, intellectual, ethical, aesthetic, and dynamic reality. This idea of evolution 
allows him to reject the illusory interpretations of the world and he gave us a philosophy of robust optimism that a new spirit of oneness will take hold of the human race and the spiritual religion of humanity is the hope of the future. Uh, thank you so much for your patience. Eh? Thank you, Professor Mantha. Uh, actually, this year uh, we are celebrating the Amrita Mahachava, the 75th year of India's independence. India became independent on 15th August 1947. And that date was the 75th year of Sri Aurobindo's birth. So this year is the sesquicentennial jubilee of Sri Aurobindo's birth and it is very much uh, fulfilling that a philosopher of the stature of Professor Mahanta delivered a very good lecture on Sri Aurobindo's life and philosophy. I thank uh, you from the core of my heart for your nice exposition of Sri Aurobindo's philosophy. It was a well-calibrated one. We liked it and the students must have been benefited by it. You said that uh, philosophy is a living subject and we must recontextualize it and do not, uh, we, do not, uh, we should not allow it to be dead as some treat classical philosophy is. You distinguished uh, among three senses of philosophy, a narrow sense, a narrower sense, and a broad sense. In the broad sense, Sri Aurobindo is a philosopher, an astute philosopher, and he is a tattodarsi, as you said it. Dasgupta would be both tattodarsi and krantodarsi, because he wrote very good poems also. Uh, philosophy is the integral way of life, as Sri Aurobindo puts it. You in your lecture dealt with uh, the labels of mind that Sri Aurobindo espouses. Those are the ordinary mind, the higher mind, the illumined mind, the intuitive mind, the over mind, the super mind. Then plus one that is above the super mind there is finally the upper hemisphere, that is the divine hemisphere of Ananda, pure absolute delight. So that is all right, so far so good. And you said uh, moreover, that is uh, very important, that the world is a self-creation from absolute being, there is, therefore it could not be illusory as Shankara and his followers have Tented it to be. You said something about Leela, I just missed it. According to Sri Aurobindo, the world could be regarded as Leela perhaps, not illusion. Now, the, op the, the paper is open for discussion by the students and the teachers are like, pass the students.
लक्ष्मण लक्ष्मण हेलो हेलो आर योर स्टूडेंट्स देयर फ्रांसिस स्टूडेंट्स आर देयर स्टूडेंट्स आर देयर इज द सिस्टम आउट ऑफ ऑर्डर और व्हाट हम फिलोसफी पाने जो अच्छ पचार जहाँ तुम सन्देह हो नुआ कथा किसी जानको इच्छा अच्छी स्त्री और बिंदु विषय में ओडिया पचार सार मैंने ट्रांसलेट करदे लक्ष्मण गोटे कौन प्रश्न थी कौन लोक लक्ष्मण सर सर कौन के पिला पचर थिले पर पचर पिलर थिला बोली ना बुझी नाही पिलर हम ओडे पिलर थिला बोली देखु दिन जे नाही मेसेज ने नाही अच्छा मु मु सर मोटे कथा पचारु छी तापर पिला क्वेश्चन आसले पचरियो तापर ले प्रोफेसर महंत अम अकॉर्डिंग टू श्री अरविंद हम द वर्ल्ड इज नॉट इल्यूजरी uh she doesn't admit that brahman alone is the satya he admits brahman as well as the world to be satya right acha we now just made the distinction among different levels of mind in which sense shall we admit that uh, these levels are uh, real how are we going to um have a functional verification of the different levels of mind a uh, very good question sir uh, actually as we are what i uh, could understand ji for sri aravinda the basic things is is theory of evolution hmm like unlike sankhya hmm that nature is unconscious he considered mm. nature is implicitly conscious so it is mm. rather evolution is a process of from implicit to explicit and in and between these these stages of evolution are there mm. and as he clarified that you know this he has not known through exercising in philosophy class rather yogic practice Mm. he has the logic the logic of infinite the infinite you are right when you said the word lila the mm. infinite was hidden mm -hmm. yes he is hidden here yes infinite is hidden there is the process of evolution so he does not believe in creation ex nihil of nihil fit mm -hmm. but this in this way but he defers that western theory of evolution if you ask them why it is there how they can explain the how it is there but they mm. cannot explain why it is there this is the plus point in his philosophy what i could understand the spirit mm -hmm. is hidden so ultimately it is spiritual but it mm. does not mean that it does not neglect the world whereas I, i had sufficient doubt in this interpretation of shankara by post shankara philosopher right. shankara yes. is one of the greatest i think he is the greatest that the shankara greatest. did not say directly the world is illusion mm then it is illusion apart from brahman it is illusion when brahman right. is known everything is known mm and then if you emphasize that world has a separate status independent existence is no Hmm. it is this is not dream but it is like dream 
Here, like I that, the interpretation of the text is very different, different mm. you know, and misleading also. Mm. I always prefer to read Sankara by mm. with the Sanskrit text, small, small Prakarana Grantha Sefer Tatta Boda. Oh. Without reading this, all these Boga's notorious commentaries, these are misleading sometimes. Mm. So, so uh, that is why I said Sankara said what is illusion in a technical sense. No technical I, the, I have not explained it here because it, mm. it needs another lecture. And mm. when Aurobindo said it is real, also in a technical sense. Mm. And the philosophy students, we, we must try to look, the, we must try to read between the lines the very subtle nonsenses, where mm. lies the difference. And mm. then only can we, as Paul Rocker says, we can contextualize the ancient philosophy. Otherwise, mm. it, it will have no bail walk. If you read a text, just memorize it, follow it, and mm. such scriptures, it is no value to us. You will have mm. to question it, examine it. And that is where I think mm. the value of both Sankara and Aurobindo lies. We will have to recapitulate, reread them. Mm. So, for example, the beginning of 20th century, Prabhu Dattva Shastri and others said, according to Sankara, the world is an illusion. Mm. And these illusionistic interpretations, the other people say, no, it is not an illusion, but mm -hmm. they are missing the real interpretation of Shankara. Shankara is not a very easy philosopher also. He must right. consider he was a poet also. Mm. So po that's why I said in the very beginning, Kranta Darshi, and there is no mm. difference between Kranta Darshi and the Tattva Darshi. Mm -hmm. And both of them are in the same line, according to me, are not mm. written on this. But at least uh, they, uh, uh, it can be developed. This is only my some of the uh, <laughs> ideas which I shared with you. I don't know. It's uh, I need your suggestion. Uh, anyway, <laughs> these are some of my. Does Sri Aurobindo's technical sense of uh, um, evolution and reality coincide mm -hmm. with the scientific sense of uh, um, evolution and reality? Evolution and reality. No, no. Evolution is a process of knowing time. reality. Huh? It's a process of knowing reality. Huh. Huh. Rather, realizing reality. That is why from knowledge, ignorance to knowledge is not a qualitative differentiative march, according huh. to Aurobin. Huh. No, no, the point is whether the technical sense is the scientific sense. No, no. The way he interprets is the way he looks at it. Mm. The, con the, the context in which he speaks about it. These are very important about when we are dealing with a philosopher. Otherwise, we will uh -huh. get contradiction in each and every philosopher. Is he, is he, is he, is he biased by the scientific uh, uh, doctrines and theories? What do you mean by the scientific? As I said, Aurobindo, if you scientific. simply say his philosophy is a synthesis, I, I, I contested this thesis because mm -hmm. the analyticity is totally the very, very strong analyticity is there. Mm -hmm. We cannot bifurcate one from other. It is integrally mm -hmm. connected. Mm -hmm. Right. That is why Lafon we call his philosophy, I said, both comprehensive and profound. Right. Sir, there is a question in the chat box. Yeah, please. Uh, uh, from Manisha Sahu, uh, what mm -hmm. is the difference between Aurobindo and other philosopher about the concept of Maya? Uh, <laughs> I have not dealt with it in details. There is mm -hmm. difference uh, because this cosmic, he says in the cosmic sense it is Maya. Maya, you know, there is no definition of Maya in Shankara's philosophy except in Viveka Churamani verse number 119. That it is Sadashat Bilakshana. Ah, it, is, it cannot say it is real, it is unreal, all this. But you know, Parabindo said Maya is a cosmic illusion in the sense that why this spirit In, in Belut, they are as a matter. 
why matter is implicitly conscious only only answer given in life divine and in savitri savitri really is wonderful again and again you read you will get new meanings to it that it is leela maya is here considered as leela as he said in savitri i am not a bhakta i am not a yogi even hmm. but we are in the hands of we are tool in the hands of lord Mm. So bhakti is also there. So it is there. Why? Because it is the it is the it is the infi by infinite logic it justifies. It is the play of the infinite. Tamar uh, uh, yeah. wow. It's a kushi of infinite. Mm. Mm. So uh, here lies the difference, but uh, uh, between uh, these two concepts. But these are totally technical. Maya is really Maya. <laughs> You cannot explain it in your language. We you cannot explain it, so we call it Maya. Mm. We understand it. We realize it, but we cannot express it. When you try to put the garment of your language, mm. your garment is always short of covering it. Mm. It is the mystery. Mm. This is my uh, humble answer. Lakshmana Vachi. Mm, sir, another question from Rajan Kanta Chichuan. Uh, mm. What is the spirituality by Sri Aurobindo? Uh, <laughs> it's not as simple as we can see. Spirituality means the spirit. Spirit is hidden there. There is nothing between the no dualism, this matter and spirit. But spirit mm. is there in matter. In what mm -hmm. way? It is in the hidden form. In evolution, mm -hmm. spirit is realized in its manifested form. So there is a march. That is why we are speaking about the end of evolution, the Gnostic being. There will be, mm -hmm. it is a philosophy of robust optimism that mm -hmm. ultimately Superman will come. His Superman is different from Nietzsche's Superman. You know, mm -hmm. so it is ultimately the spirit. One is hidden spirit, another mm -hmm. is manifested spirit. In that way, his philosophy is spiritual. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 no, 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 sir. Achha. We are grateful to you, sir, for your scintillating lecture. This was very much refreshing, and you made the environment so lovely. I am indebted to you and I thank you on behalf of BD College Jaipur and ICPR New Delhi for your kind presence and delivering of the learned lecture. Thank you very much. Whenever we will want you, I hope you will not say no <laughs> because you have been always with us and we regard you as one among us. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I, uh, uh, I, I, I should always say yes when I get inspiration from you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you are inspiring us. At least uh, it is our duty to see that philosophy is a living subject, uh, at least in Bengal and Odisha. Uh, so uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for your appreciation uh, and patronage. Uh, thank you. Uh, yesterday, we had a lecture from Charlotta Mahanti about Adhita conception of mind. There he tried, uh, she tried to follow Professor Ganeshwar Mishra and her own guide, Tapati Maitra, to explain the concept of mind without taking recourse to metaphysical speculations and mystical tinges. And uh, being students of Professor Ganeshwar Mishra, I am also in that line of thinking. I wish to always to present the concepts and problems of Indian philosophy in a demystified manner. 
deem met, met, uh, I mean non-metaphysical and demystified manner. We have a speaker today. Uh, again, uh, he is an astute uh, Odia, eminent Odia, who is now working in West Bengal. It is good that he had uh, vacated a place for some Odia here because uh, very few persons are as qualified and uh, as eligible to be inducted outside Odisha. We are uh, grateful to you in that respect also. In the form of uh, Professor Lakshmikanta Padi, who will speak on mysticism today to our audience here. Let us see in which sense he would defend or reject mysticism as a way of thinking in so far as Indian philosophy is concerned. Professor Padi. Sadasiva Samaram Ham Sankara Charya Madhamam Asmad Acharya Pariyantam Bande Guru Parampara Om Sthira Sthanu Prabhurjima Prabharu Varadu Varaha Sarvatma Sarvadikyataha Sarva Sarva Karibhavaha Jati Charmi Srikhandicha Sarvangaha Sarvabhavanaha Arascha Harinakhyascha Sarvabhuta Haraprabhu Prabhrutishcha Nibhrutishcha Niyataha Saswata Dhuvaha Smasana Vasi Bhagavan Khacharu Gojaro Tan. Respected, my respected and my reverend teacher, Professor G.P. Das. Uh, the convener of this four days webinar program sponsored by ICPR in the form of Indian Philosophers Day, Dr. Lakman Patra. Who is the head of the Department of Philosophy, Vikram Dev Autonomous PG Department of Philosophy, Vikram Dev Autonomous College, the coordinator of this four days webinar, uh, Sri Francis Barla, who is an assistant professor of philosophy at Vikram Dev Autonomous College, and the patron of this uh, webinar and the principal of this college, uh, Dr. Gopal Khodar. Uh, today, today, uh, and also my co-speaker, Professor Dilip Kumar Mahanta, and some of my students from my university who are established in different colleges in West Bengal, they have also joined. I can find Suryakant Maharana. And also, uh, one of my Bujum friends nowadays, Dr. Sasibhusan Ratha, he has also joined. Uh, thank you all for showing your interest uh, in this webinar program. And uh, I am indebted to Professor Das for inviting me and the family of Bikram Dev Autonomous College for inviting me to this webinar program. The title of my uh, presentation is, uh, Is Indian Philosophy Mystical? I mean, I start, I will start uh, the, uh, uh, the, the presentation with a question mark and I will give an answer. Uh, to this question in my concluding part. Uh, my agenda for today's uh, 45 minutes presentation is, I have, I think, more than 50 or 60 slides. I will define what do you mean by mysticism? Basically, I prepared this uh, presentation with the hope to satisfy uh, the students' uh, uh, understanding and students' desirability about Indian philosophy. Uh, so my target is the students and also uh, some of the uh, uh, scholars uh, uh, query about mysticism. So I'll start with this question, what do you mean by mysticism and who is a mystic? Then I'll discuss the basic characteristic of mysticism and I'll discuss mystical accounts of world religious traditions. Then I will discuss the basic, uh, the four remarkable features of uh, mysticism. I will refer to Bimal Krishna Motilal and Russell, but and Russell on mysticism, specifically one of the characteristic of uh, mysticism that is ineffability. Then I will go through BK Motilal's two basic questions on ineffability in Indian philosophy. 
then uh, I will again I will discuss on the question is mysticism a theory of language then I will go for a uh, proposed conclusion this is my agenda and I will try my level best to finish it within 45, 45 or 50 minutes <clears throat> see what do you mean by mysticism you know mysticism is a process where we move beyond a personal God and mysticism refers to human beings direct experience or consciousness of ultimate reality understood as God within the context of a faith and the essence of mysticism is the sense of some form of contact with the divine or transcendent frequently understood in its higher forms as involving union with God. Mysticism, mysticism has played an important role in the history of religion and it has once again become a noticeably living influence in recent times. Now, what are the basic characteristics of mysticism? See, mysticism is practical. Mysticism is an entirely spiritual activity and the method of mysticism is love because according to mysticism love is the active connotative expression of one's will and desire for the supreme or the absolute and also love is one's innate tendency to that absolute or supreme power one's spiritual weight and mysticism involves a definite psychological experience Depending upon this definition, now who is a mystic? A mystic, mystics do not say what they mean and do not mean what they say. The mystical reality is said to be beyond language and the mystic's experience is uncharacterized, uncharacterizable, even uncategorizable. Words cannot describe it. And the mystics knows that all languages, including the sacred, dogmatic, ritual language, is too impo impoverished to perform the descriptive role and the true unity of being transcends both linguistic expression and the very particularity that language necessarily entails. Now, another question comes to a mystic is a person who believes in thought transference and a mystic is a person who has attained the union with reality in greater or less degree and a mystic is a person who aims at and believes in such attainment. A mystic is a person who aspires after a mystical life must have a persistent and, and penetrating, penetrating intellect. A mystic is a person who also have a powerful philosophic imagination. But there is a skeptical thinking in mysticism. The point is that not all mystics need to be philosophers. Not all mystics need be poets. Not all mystics need be activists. Not all mystics lead a life of emotion. But wherever true mysticism is, one of these faculties must predominate. A skeptic is not necessarily a mystic. And the mystic cannot always be a thoroughgoing skeptic. mystic The question remains whether mystical consciousness and insight takes us away from the realm of logical awareness and look beyond the laws of logic, the so-called so -called laws of non-contradiction and laws of excluded middle, are we to take the canonical position as self-authenticating? Does the closed study of mystical language, of mystical literary sources in their various forms reveal a more complex and very different picture of the way things are? Do mystics use language in ways that disprove the superficial claims, the naive architectonic disjunction that dominate the history as well as the contemporary study of the subject? These four questions 
comes to our mind, even though mysticism describes everything. Now, if you go to world religion, specifically Buddhism, let me start from Buddhism. In Buddhism, there is a concept called Vipassana. And what do you mean by Vipassana? Vipassana is a connection between contemplation and mystical experience. Basically, Vipassana is developed in Tibetan Buddhism and it points to the centrality of the self and its transformation in the mystical journey. And Vipassana, uh, the very, very, very underlying principle of Vipassana is that the mind, minds are not our own. Amo mono, amo We may think that that uh, that uh, that that, uh, that, uh, that uh, they are rare. My thoughts, my ideas, my feelings, my hopes and aspirations. Vipassana requires us to do simple thing, quiet the mind, do not chase the sunbeams, sunbeams and shadows, no matter how petty or troubling they may be. The sthira chitta, sthira mastiska, ebang sthira mano nahi ki jeta parjalo chana koru, seita kuhi sthibhati and buddhism re vipassana boli kohaya hoche. If you go to Christian mysticism, basically it is all developed in western philosophical tradition. Western Christian mysticism developed from scholasticism in, in medieval theology. And Christian mysticism uh, originated back to Plotinus in the third century, whose dogma was blissfully derived from Platonism. It was further advanced by Porphyry, Proculus, and some of their students. Basically, there is a concept called throne mysticism in Christianity, specifically common in Bible. And the concept of God in sitting in a throne, just like the teacher so that symbolizes the power of his rule is common in the Bible, while the idea of the throne of glory is repeated in rabbinic literature and in poetry. If you go to the Jews' mystical thinking, you can find that mysticism and mystical experience have been a part of Judaism since the early period. The Torah contains the Torah contains many stories of mystical experience, from visitations by angels to prophetic dreams of visions. If you go to again the uh, Jewish mysticism, you can find there is a concept called Kabbalah, and uh, there is they believe in the spirit in rocks and mountains, but they have a very 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 very, very uh, open mindedness. And they have a desire to receive for the self alone. And whatever they receive that is certain, and they help us to be certain and justified according to Jewish mysticism. If you go to the Sufism, I mean Islamic mysticism, you can find that in basically Sufism is generally understood to be the inner mystical dimension of Islam. And you know, Sufism is not a religion separate from Islam, you know, it is not a sect, it is not parallel path opposed to Sharia. What Sufism is, it is the Islamic movement to lead the believer to a union of, union of love with God. And it is an expression of, of interior jihad, you know, the concept of jihad is misinterpreted and misunderstood, you know. A, a, it, is, it is a practical program of spiritual development so that believers in Sufism can live united with God in their daily lives. This is the mystical thinking in Sufism. If you go to mystical thinking in Indian philosophy or tradition and culture, we can refer to the Vedic period who raised a, who, who, where, where the seers in Vedic period raised a question that which God is really there? To whom we must offer oblation. And these questions reveal the fact that skepticism is as old as the birth of civilization. The relation between religion and mysticism is explicitly concerned with the separation between mysticism and religion. And it is believed that mysticism is something other than religion, and religion is something apart from mysticism. The, based on this attitude, there were mystical attitude before divine religion in Indian philosophy, tradition and 
culture. If you go to Upanishad specifically in the in the in the Mundaka Upanishad, we can find there is a very beautiful statement given given in Mundaka Upanishad that Kasmin nu bhagavo vigyanti sarvam nidam vigyantam bhavati iti. What does it mean? It means what is that by knowing which everything is known in the same pattern, just as I mean, I mean, in Chandogya Upanishad, it is also said that Athaha Atha Jadidasmin Brahmapuri Daharan Kundari Kam Besma Daharasmin Antara Kasam Asmin Tia Antastak Bestabyam Tadabhava Vijigya Sitabyam Iti. This body is the city of Brahman. Within this body is an abode in the shape of a lotus, and within that there is a small space. One must search within this space and earnestly desire to know what is there. The spiritual land of a man, pure in soul, is within him. Try to enter the cell within you, and you will see the heavenly cell. They are one and the same. By one entry, you enter both. The ladder to the heavenly kingdom is within you, and it is built mysteriously in your soul. This is mentioned in Chandogya Upanishad. So, mysticism in Indian philosophical tradition or Indian culture says that the status, experience, and understanding of consciousness, awareness, the mind, the self occupy the work of mystical reflection. Indian philosophical systems of thought and later on Tibetan Buddhist writers excel in this arena. For example, let me, uh, 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 for example, Prabhakara Mimansakas occupy themselves with the question of whether or not the self is self luminous. And Prabhakara Mimansaka concludes that the self is not, not consciousness. And while consciousness is self luminous, the self is not. This emphasis on consciousness and awareness makes mysticism a possible ally to the contemporary brain science or cognitive science in the Western philosophical arena. So this is the development of mysticism in Indian philosophical system. Well, but if, we, if you ask me what are the basic characteristics of mysticism, then one slide is enough to discuss the basic characteristic of uh, mysticism. The first foremost characteristic of mysticism is ineffability. What do you mean by ineffability? Ineffability means there is no words to describe it or inability to capture the experience in ordinary language, a vernanya. The second quality is noetic quality. It means I know this is extremely significant and it is the real truth. Or the notion that mystical experience reveal an otherwise hidden or inaccessible knowledge. The third is transiency, means I still clearly recall and refer to the sense, insights, and qualify of experience years later. The fourth is passivity, I did not cause or will the experience. And this these four basic features of mysticism has been taken from William James and the varieties of religious experience published in 1902. Now, I will focus only the one features that is ineffability. Ineffability means inability to capture the experience in ordinary language, and there is no word to describe it. And to say that the experience is ineffable makes, makes two things actually. The first is, that it is in some sense beyond expression, and it is indescribable, as I said, unspeakable or overnanial. The second is that expression is in some sense forbidden. That any attempt to do so would be unfaithful or untrue to the experience. One more factor responsible for ineffability is the gap between mystic and the ordinary man. Jane Sadhana Manisa, among Jane Mystic Modhere Gute, 
गोटे फांका जगह रही जाइपाई इनेफेबिलिटी एत स्ट्रंग लिंगुईस्टिक कम्युनिकेशन इज नथिंग बट ए ट्रांजेक्शन विटुईन टू पार्टीज किए स्पीकर एंड हियर वक्ता एवं श्रोता इन द केस अफ मिस्टिक एंड एन अर्डिनरी पर्सन देर इज ए क्वालिटेटिव डिफरेन्स इन दियर अंडरस्टैंडिंग फर द नन मिस्टिक हुईज इन दर्डिनरी लेवल एंड कैनट अंडरस्टैंड द इंटेनसन अफ ए मिस्टिक गुणगत विभाग गुणगत विभाजन रहे and figurative speech on the other hand in order to communicate to the non mystic it is also not true that mystic experience cannot be communicated at all except by one's own experience a non mystic can understand something about the mystic object and mystic experience this is the beautiful point uh, cited by 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 william james in his really varieties of religious experience i am not going to discuss about noetic quality and transiency but i will discuss only one quality another quality of uh, mystic mysticism is that unity of oppositions it means a sense of oneness wholeness or completeness a common characteristic of many mystical states is the presence of a consciousness of oneness ekottor chetana in mystical experience the dilemma of duality is resolved मिस्टिकल एक्सपीरियंस रे द्वैतवाद रहे जो दिमतर द्वंद फॉर द मिस्टिक्स द यूनिफाइंग विजन इज वन इन द ऑल एंड ऑल इन द वन सर्वत्व भितर एकत्व एवं एकत्व भितर सर्वत्व दिस इज द यूनिफाइंग कैरेक्टर ऑफ कैरेक्टरिस्टिक ऑफ मिस्टिसिज्म नाउ एज आई साइटेड एज आई पॉइंटेड अर्लियर दैट i will only discuss b k motilal's view on ineffability characters characteristic of mysticism what motilal says motil b k motilal says that philosophy in classical india was often a genuine intellectual effort but not a perfumed nonsense motilal opines it is clear that the nyaya vaisheshika thesis is a good answer to mysticism and the ineffability doctrine it should also remove the western misunderstanding that indian philosophy is invariably mystical the business of most classical indian philosophers was solid and down to earth philosophic argumentation not the creation of mystical illusion or poetic description of mystical experience this i quote from journal of philosophy volume 3 in 1975 published by b k motilal if you compare with russell and motilal on mysticism i find a a a, a beautiful comparison between the two but and russell distinguish two impulses in history of philosophy one is the mystical and the second is the logical motilal shows that one cannot say that indian philosophy is an outburst of the mystical impulse in indian philosophy mysticism is the subject of argument and what is argument is the expression of a logical impulse no this is the view given by given by motilal some interpretation of indian philosophy which rely upon the psychopathology of the indian mind or upon the supposed perennial but insoluble character of philosophical problems are challenged by motilal motilal shows that to understand the development of philosophy in india study the content of the argument you know jodi ame indian philosophy ko bujhiwa pai chesta kariba motilal ko anusare we should understand the content of the argument gude baidha jukti ba baidha argument valid argument re 
विषय विषय कौन कह परिस्थिति रे कह कंटेक्स आगे बुझा दरकार बाद अच्छी ना जल्प अच्छी ना बीतंडा अच्छी ना संशय अच्छी ना तर्क अच्छी प्रोब्लेम गुड़ा आगे न बुझले कंटेन्ट अफ द आर्गुमेंट न बुझले इंडियान फिलोसफी को बुझा आमप असुविधा डिफिकल्ट हम एंड मतिलाल अल्सो एटाक्स मिस्टिजम एज ए डक्ट्रीन गोटे डक्ट्रीन हिसाब से मतिलाल कितु मिस्टिजम को केवीपार करना अकर्डिंग टू मतिलाल Mysticism has been loosely used for a varieties of views. The salient features of these views is that they envision an integrated picture of the cosmos and promote a special type of human experience that is at once unitive and non-discursive, at once self-fulfilling and self-effacing. William James, in his Varieties of Religious Experience, said that. This experience has a noetic quality. The experience are becoming directly aware of the ultimacy of the experience. Motilal, this is actually Motilal when explaining this, this, this uh, content of the argument in Indian philosophy to avoid the jargon of, 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 of Indian mysticism, he has two basic questions. The first question Motilal asked is that Indian philosophy is not mystically inclined. When then, then question arises, why then is it that in India mysticism is the repeated theme of the argument? Jodi in Indian philosophy re mysticism nahi, but mysticism dora prorochita hoi nahi, tahale sabu argument re. मिस्टिसिजम कहीं रिपीटेडली बारंबार बारंबार मिस्टिसिजम गुरुत्व दिया दिखे इफ रियलीटी इज नॉट इनफेबल व्हाई डज मिस्टिसिजम क्रोप अप इन डिफरेंट इंडिपेंडेंट इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन रियलीटी रियलीटी टा जब अवर्णन हुए इनफेबल हुए मिस्टिसिजम मिस्टिसिजम कहीं जिते गुड़ा, गुड़ा इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन डेभलप इंडिपेडेन्टली सब गुड़े मिस्टिसिजम प्राधान्य कहीं रही दिस इज एन इम्पोर्टा क्वेश्चन सैटेड बै मोतिलाल मोतिलाल रेसनालीजम कन्सीडर्स दैट मिस्टिसिजम अंडाउटेडली फिगर्स प्रमिनेंटली इन इंडियान डिस्प्यूटेसन एंड इन ट्रेडिशन नो अदर इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन रिभल्व सो क्लोजली अराउंड मिस्टिसिजम इंडियान फिलोसफी डिड नट जस्ट एफार्म इनफेबिलिटी But are good about it. But why invariably and perennially about the mystical? A prasna ta kintu. This question is repeatedly asked by Motilal. One answer may be given to Motilal's question. Mysticism as a doctrine is an important theme in Indian philosophy because it plays a very special role against the unique Vedic background of Indian philosophy. However, for Motilal, mysticism in, mystia, in Indian philosophy was not the outburst of the mystical impulse at all. We can say that mysticism was originally an expression of the most extreme kind of logical impulse. According to Motilal, mysticism is a mysticism bhitore, but a logical impulse. Si, torko kora, tor, tarkiko prabhanata raichi. This is the view given by Motilal. Say, for example, the doctrine of ineffability in mysticism was a revolutionary attempt to combat, combat obscurantism and jargon. Ineffability encourages one to think for oneself, to challenge authority. And this is the opposite of mystical impulse, according to Motilal. Okay. But Ineffability had its logical error. Ineffability was into gote sima rohi chhi. Taro taro madhya torko sammata bhranti rohi chhi. It was forced by its own logic into a new kind of jargon, which is exposed by Motilal. Because of their reverence for the Vedas, Indian philosophers felt the need to preserve them as authentically as possible. In the absence of Vedic writing. 
the problem of preserving an authentic verbal record was achieved particularly by the pur purohitas or the brahmins the brahmins or the purohitas or the priest were charged with the task of memorizing the works without interpreting them jo brahman mane mantra uchcharan karuthile se mane mantra ra artha kon jani nathile no thile khali kebal uchcharan kari jauthile but interpretation was left to others uchcharan ta uchcharan ra mane kon mantra ra artha kon eta anya mane bujhauthile hence there was no way a priest could contaminate the verse to suit his philosophy because his task is not to expound wisdom but merely to know the words and to recite them by heart in right occasion sanskrit scholars in some extent can recite them flawlessly and effortlessly in certain occasion this method of preserving the verbal record was astonishingly, astonishingly successful in indian philosophical system but though the verses were remain the original interpretation of the words was gradually lost sanskrit shloka gura jete bele se mane uchcharan karuthile ba mantra jete bele uchcharan karuthile mantra gura rahi jauthila kintu jete bele taku interpretation kole bibhinna arthare sete bele mantra ro actually jo interpretation ro artha se artha gura dhire 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 bhari bhari gala tar artha artha hina hoi gala yet people remained in admiration admiration of the words tathapi lok mane sanskrita shabda ro uchcharan ba mantra ro uchcharan ku ottanta prashansa karuthile one way to preserve the vedas was sanskrit grammar sanskrita vyakaran ro gote bado bhumika rahithila ved ku kipari sangrakshan kara jai pare the grammar of panini we know everybody we know that grammar of panini is uniquely suited to the study of sanskrit language with a minimum interpretation thus the synthetic characteristic of grammar is to show how to synthesize element into longer fragments it is also phonetics shabda nada brahma in the sense that it deals primarily with sentences and sounds rather than with the meaning and interpretation अर्थ एवं तार इंटरप्रिटेशन उपरे जतेटा गुरुत्व दिया होतला वाक्य एवं शब्द उपरे बेसी गुरुत्व दिया होतला एवं व्हाट इज दैट शब्द फोनेटिक माने कोन फोनेटिक बेसिकली इफ यू गो टू वेस्टर्न फिलॉसफी फोनेटिक इज कंट्रास्टेड विद द अरिस्टोटेलियन ग्रामर व्हिच रूल्ड इन द वेस्टर्न सिविलाइजेशन अंटिल द डिस्कवरी ऑफ पानिनियन ग्रामर्स इन 19th सेंचुरी संस्कृत ग्रामर डील्स विद पार्टिकल्स ऑफ वर्ड एज साउंड where the greek approach was judgment oriented sanskrit vyakaran re shabd ku shabd gudar mane shabd ro artha ku shabd hisabe re jana hotla bhava hotla kintu greek approach re seta judgment oriented thila that's why there is a difference between uh, greek approach to interpretation and interpretation by sanskrit grammar approximately in 700 bc indian life came to be dominated by the unmeaning word and it was remained for the most part and time even in a modern hindu wedding it is a matter of rituals and of the recitation of the mantras for example dele ko hajibo je gote baha ghar re jetele mantra uchcharan kara jaye mantra ta ko gote pratha parampara hisabe dhara jaye ritual kintu mantra ro artha kehi bujanti ni the priest does not understand it je brahman ba je purohit se bujeni and the audience will carry on with what they are doing while the chanting of chanting of mantras go on brahman jemti jemti mantra uchcharan karuchi karta ba je purohi purohitra je ko mane je je puja karuchi ba je bahagar konya pita se automatically se bhaliya mantra uchcharan kari jauchi without understanding the meaning of the mantras thus we can say that in all hindu ceremonies there is only one god and that is the god of the pure phoneme the unmeaning sound or a unity of sound that can distinguish the distinguish one word from another in a particular language and that is called nada brahma or shabda brahma this phonetic religion finds expression in the doctrine contained in the word om om means a sound a e u m though there are different meaning but here i emphasize on the meaning that is called sound 
everything is in this one word not in its meaning but in the sound this is the obscurantism which the doctrine of ineffability set out to destroy the doctrine of ineffability in mysticism asserts that the most important things are not in words not even in the vedic words so when we hear the words we do think for ourselves the words need us to think and interpret them shabda amaku interpretation karibare sahajya kare ebon amaku amaku chinta kariba pai sahajog kare thus the early upanishads must be interpreted as not just commentaries on the vedas but as critical commentaries gole samalochana mulak dharana nei ki ame upanishad gura ku aste aste bujha ku chesta kore they were not expositions of the true meaning of the vedas at all rather the bankruptcy of the phonetic religion shabda bujhi shabda ku bujhi bare abhavata for motilal the doctrine of ineffability in mysticism was originally an expression of the logical impulse of rationalism the impulse to challenge jargon and obscurantism jete guda shabda mulak badha ebong obscurantism jete asibo sei guda ku samadhan to to solve that obscurantism is a is a expression of rationalism and this is done by motilal in order to oppose the power of the meaninglessness the meaningless word the early upanishad deny that ultimate knowledge is expressed in vedic words but unfortunately the upanishad did not go far enough this is the view given by bk motilal they did not deny the view that vedic verses contain the very wisest of the words but the difficulty is if the most important knowledge is not expressed in the wisest of the words in the vedas then the knowledge must be inexpressible jodi vedara katha gura ku ame shabda dwara byabohar express kari paribani tahale vedic knowledge ta inexpressible hoi jibo it must be ineffable words cannot describe it this is how the doctrine of ineffability came to exist which bk motilal has criticized the buddha opposed not only the vedic jargon but also the vedas ami samasta janichu buddha kebala vedare kete guda misunderstanding ku criticize karna thile but vedo itself is criticized by the buddhist by buddha buddha did so in order to be rational pragmatic and humanitarian most of the followers of buddha fell into upanishadic trap of mysticism and the very trap of the, his teaching was bent on avoiding so i have discussed the first question in by motilal the second question says that if reality is not ineffable why does mysticism crop up in different independent intellectual tradition jodi reality ta ko ame describe kari paribani varnana kari paribani tahale mysticism ta kahi ki indian philosophical system re repeatedly bahut mane repeatedly seta ko byabohar kara jai chi what do these tradition have in common independent in what what is the independent i mean what is the common in this indian independent indian intellectual tradition if you go to uh, refer if you if i refer to wt stace stace thinks that it could it could it could be the ineffable reality which is common but motilal has demolished this suggestion given by wt stace motilal says that it could be human nature which is shared by all traditions but this takes us back to the mystical impulse theory of philosophy which is not satisfied in motilal's view now what is the common factor in 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 mystical tradition all mystical tradition shared something which they also share with non mystical tradition and that common factor is language one may believe that mysticism is really a theory of theory about language and hardly about reality both 
दार्शनिक बहुत जो मैंने समालोचना कर थिरी अफ लांगुएज एवं डिल्स ओथ थिरी अफ लांगुएज एंड इट डिल्स हार्डली अबाउट रियालीटी If we regard mysticism as a theory of language and not a theory of reality, there is nothing mysterious about the fact that mysticism occurs in different independent intellectual traditions. जदि हमें mysticism को गुटे language हिसाब से theory of language हिसाब से consider करेगा, ताहले ये जो कथा टक हुआ गला, जो mysticism Indian independent intellectual tradition रे repeatedly बेवहार रही थी, ये टाइम हमें कोई परिवार थियोरी ऑफ लैंग्वेज हिसाब रे चिंता करिया। नाउ द क्वेश्चन इज ए थियोरी ऑफ लैंग्वेज सतरे कौन मिस्टिजम गोटे भाषा तत्व मतलाल कह एंड द रिजन मे बी गिवेन विथ एन एक्जामपल लेट अस गिवेन एक्जामपल सपोज आई हाव नो पार्टिकुला थिरी अफ लांगुएज सपोज आई फाइंड दैट I cannot express adequately my disgust upon seeing some color. Can I then say that there is anything that is ineffable? No, not everything that I cannot express is ineffable. जे जिन्स टा को मुझ जो जिन्स गुड़ा को मुझ एक्सप्रेस करी परोनी सेटा अवर्णनीय हो बो एक तथा कोई भी भारी डिफिकल्ट. So if I go on to say that something is really ineffable. I am proposing a theory of the limit of language. मुझे दिस सत्ता रे कुछ किसी जे reality टा ineffable हो चुके तमन है मु language रगुटे सीमा निर्धारण करो चुके जो टा हवा का थानु हो according to Motilal. Motilal again questions this ineffability uh, to to solve this ineffability ineffability by language. What he asks can a very personal and intensely intensely felt experience be properly prescribed described or expressed in language are pure sensation or sensory experience affable can the expression i am in pain communicate exactly what it is that i am in how would one know that how would one know what it is to be in a drunken state if one has never been drunk in his life how would one know what it is to be have a mystical experience if one has never had such an experience these five questions basically these five questions are basically somehow related to the problem of other mind in western epistemology and also to some way related to the problem in cognitive science i think suryakant who is present over here he can explain these questions in a better manner now if we go on to say that something is really ineffable then actually we are proposing a theory of the limit of language resulting in the following queries jodi language ko ami limit kor douche tale ei chota prashna poni asio what are these questions what is a language for language kon pai is it solely a means of communication bhavo binimoy pai kon language ra language avashyakata achi can we communicate our most private and intensely felt experience in language does language not communicate information about a shared world and shared experience perhaps can linguistic science refer to unique particulars can uniqueness and particularity be captured by language ei prashna guda e uttar mo bhabu ji sar khub sundar amar ganesh sar burgenstein ku refer kori ki prashna ru uttar guda ame aram se mile mile jibo amko now to respond some of this above difficulties we can find that there is for example a well entrenched philosophical position that argues that our direct sensory experience has an element with it within it that cannot be put into words there is an element in our direct sensory experience which which cannot be expressed in words whatever truth may lie in this view it is implicitly at work as the basis of many of our epistemological disputes over sensation perception conceptualization knowledge and problem of other mind modern philosophers or contemporary philosophers of language have enunciated a principle of expressibility according to which 
it is held that for anything that a speaker wishes to communicate, there are words in the speaker's language that can express it. This principle means that what can be meant can be said. This is well known in the literature according to Motilal. What Motilal again says that, it was Motilal referred to Bhartri Hari. It was Bhartri Hari who said that there is no expressive word in our language for the word object relation. This might be interpreted as asserting that the relation can only be shown but not said in our language. Thus, we come back to ineffability again. This is particularly intriguing, intriguing because it was Bhatri Hari himself who explicitly propounded the strong thesis that we cannot be aware of something without the inter interpenetration of word in it. It is, however, still logically compatible to contend that there may be ineffable objects, but we cannot cognize such objects even if they exist. And if we somehow become aware of such an object, we would be in some way effable, though, though something else may still be ineffable. Again, the description of the alleged mystical experience in ordinary language when treated, treated as a description of just another experience appears to be ordinary or even nonsensical. A poetic expression, if it is treated as a prosaic description of some ordinary state of affairs, would appear to be equally ba banal. If my beloved is with me, the scorching rays of the sun would be as cool as the moon. But if my beloved is away, the moonbeams are as scorching as the sun rays. If we take this emotional content away from this statement, this becomes almost a nonsensical statement. But in the context of poetry, where the emotion is transmitted into the readers, this expression does a new cloak of meaning, which is, which is both beautiful and enjoyable. The language of the mystic has to be contextualized in the same way, just like in the as the poetic expression or emotional expression. Now, let me come to the proposed conclusion. Uh, uh, what I say that actually uh, it is a prejudice that Indian mysticism is a tragic story which was began as a revulsion against the worship of jargon out of an overwhelming concern with language. It cannot be a coincidence that the dangerous rise of popular mysticism today in the 19th or 20th century comes at a time when the nature and limit of language have again become topic of central concern. This also partly explains the newly found popularity of the mystics in India and the East Asian country or South Asian countries. One can only hope that the modern and very different problem about language will soon be resolved before our neo-Greek culture, which is now stoutly denying its own values, turns entirely upon itself. And the compelling modern reason for mysticism seems to be the discovery of Russell and other antinomies, which cannot be solved without falling back on a logical consistency at some level. So mysticism in Western thought has also been associated with linguistic worries regarding Christianity, regarding the Bible, which is more akin to Indian mysticism than more dangerous modern kind of mysticism. In the history of philosophy, we find that very often the mystic experiences are rejected on the ground that they are subjective experiences. But according to Sri Aurobindo, as Professor Dilip Mahanto was have said that according to Sri Aurobindo, subjectivity and objectivity are not independent realities. Sri Aurobindo quote, they are the being through consciousness, looking at subject on the object, and the same being offering itself to its own consciousness as object 
to the subject answers provided by mysticism or mystical experiences are non intellectual are not intellectual solutions but existential dissolutions see mystic if you if you ask questions to mysticism or mystical experience they will not give an intellectual solution but they are basically existential dissolutions god or mystical power does not provide us with a justification for suffering but what he does to provide a glimpse of his majesty and power is enough for realization we are still troubled by the suffering of innocent children but we no longer find that suffering to be a spiritual barrier the more fully we surrender to the warmth of mystical power and loving presence that engulfed us the more we find our intellectual anguish giving away to peace joy and a far more practical questions perhaps this is an answer to the question is indian philosophy mystical let me end with one quotation from florence nightingale what is mysticism it is not the attempt to draw near to god not by rites or ceremonies but by inward dispositions is it not merely a hard word for the kingdom of heaven is within heaven is neither a place nor a time i also end with one sloko from ashtavakra gita it is said that in ashtavakra gita chapter 1 sloka number 17 nirapeksho nirvikaro nirbhara sitala asaya agadha buddhir chakshu buddhir rakhyubdha bhavat chint matra vasana you are unconditioned and changeless formless and immovable unfathomable awareness and on perturbable so hold to nothing but consciousness thank you the german references thank you for listening to me patiently thank you sir. thank you professor sari for your erudite lecture demonstrated in ppt you said so many things that i am inclined to say kasme devayo habisa jo he mo which one do i hold on to and speak about it so many things are there and naturally so many questions should be there mo to 50 second question likhi rakhi but i will not ask them at all mo bhoy dori ji sir dori ji sir but i will not ask them because there are so many questions in the chat box they will ask okay but uh, initially we wanted to know whether indian philosophy is mystical or indian philosophy is not mystical that is for us the way you are going to deal with and one thing i got from your long and clear lecture that is mysticism is not ingrained in indian philosophy you followed bk yes. motilal to say this yes, yes. and uh, you said that there is logical impulse yes. behind the so called mysticism that is all like that is uh, yes. Uh, Motilal and uh, I will actually agree with Motilal also, but then there are difficulties, many difficulties. Yes. But uh, what I think mysticism to be is this. You ask mysticism? one question, wait, sir. What mysticism is this? Is this? I will. Is this? I am. I am telling. This. Okay. Is this? You asked one question whether language is meant to communicate uh, our own um, uh, ideas. Yes. Expression of ideas. Yes, it is meant for that. One might uh, convey it um, veraciously, or one might convey it to create an illusion. Shakuni, okay. for example, in Mahabharata, mm. said that language is not used to uh, yes. convey the truth, but yes. to create beauty in persons. Mm. But sometimes, while expressing our ideas. that um, a language becomes inadequate hmm. but the True. point is that when from the discourse <clears throat> uh, it is revealed that uh, language is inadequate 
mm-hmm. mysticism lurks there yes true so in 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 and through what he said if it is revealed if it is shown that uh, language is not adequate enough here to express what the speaker wants to express then that is perhaps a sign of mysticism true that is my understanding uh, yes. let it let it be true let it be. true sir we but, cannot uh, we cannot avoid mysticism sir but hmm. language cannot express it as i but, already but but the mysticism are of various shades there is a yes. linguistic mysticism there is literary mysticism there yes. is a logical mysticism also yes 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 would, would you say bradley would be in that um, um, lot even if there, there is poetic mm. even if there is poetic uh, mysticism no, literal i said uh, yes yes that, that is it. but but then i i uh, whole heartedly congratulate you to have Thank put you. so much of things because be, before us Thank that you. we will have days and nights in for some days some nights to think over that and uh, ask you if there is any difficulty and uh, all also to have swadhyaya to resolve our own difficulties exactly. but for the time being there are arising so many questions lakshman yes. will pose them one by one please respond to that uh, thank you sir uh, for your thought provoking presentation there are some questions in the chat box um a question by srivasan krishnamurthy yes yes, yes. let me read lakshman let uh, me read because okay. if you read i cannot strike let me read uh, uh, do you distinguish mysticism versus theosophism and occultism uh, madam bladeski was a famous theoretical theosophist and an occultist so also alberuni was a sufist and occultist by speculation he measured the radius of the earth secondly the mysticism have a direct communion with universal reality and speak about the revelation of the ultimate truth is not relating to black magic or so kindly clarify yes uh, professor sinivasan i agree with you see uh, as i said in my dis- in, in my 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 uh, uh, well when i discuss that who is a mystic and what are the characteristic of of mysticism i have already pointed out that that mysticism is practical not theoretical and mysticism is entirely a, a spiritual activity and the method of uh, mysticism is love you know and love is expressed in connotative expression or a, 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 a love is expressed as an innate tendency to the absolute and 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 and, and, and you can say that mysticism um, involves a definite psychological experience so you you uh, i mean mysticism in this sense is you you cannot i mean there is a relationship between spirituality mysticism your experience with the supernatural experience alberuni you have mentioned about alberuni i mean you can talk about that they are mystic mystic but even if mysticism has its own logical impulse as professor das has reiterated after my presentation <clears throat> another question you atma siddhi is it considered as mysticism when one enter, entertains yoga or samadhi or transcendental meditation yes uh, atma siddhi is i mean if you translate it into english uh, in 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 uh, in uh, uh, i mean self realization uh, yes definitely self realization is one kind of atma siddhi and it is because of your experience because you believe in some mystical power supernatural power that's why your atma becomes suddhi but one thing i want to point out here one 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 example from ramayan sir one day hanuman asked uh, 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 sorry ramchandra ramchandra asked hanuman a question that hanuman ji how do you see me how do you see hanuman replied deva buddhya daso aham jiva buddhya tadam sakha atma buddhya tume baham iti me nischita mati no deva buddhya daso aham when i think myself as a body 
ఐ ఎమ్ ద సర్వెంట్ దీవ బుద్ధ దాసో అహం జీవ బుద్ధ తదం సఖా వెన్ ఐ థింక్ ఆఫ్ మై సెల్ఫ్ యాజ్ మైండ్ ఆర్ కాన్షియస్నెస్ ఐ ఎమ్ ఏ పార్ట్ ఆఫ్ యూ ఐ ఆర్ ఐ ఎమ్ యర్ ఫ్రెండ్ ఆత్మ బుద్ధ తమే బహం యజ్ మై ఆత్మన్ యూ అండ్ ఐ ఆర్ ద సేమ్ ఇతి మే నిశ్చితమతి దిస్ ఇస్ ద ఇటర్నల్ ట్రూత్ సో how do you see me it depends upon your interpretation it, de- it depends upon your self realization also a, a respect towards the other and you talked about atma siddhi hanuman has atma siddhi that's why he said that deva buddhya daso aham jiva buddhya tadam sakha because it is at sar because it is swadhyaya because it is atma siddhi that's why hanuman has realized this this respect towards ramchandra and rajnikanth again asked a question is mystical language of emptiness meant to be taken literally <laughs> uh, i don't think that mysticism is full of emptiness full of void full of shunya in mysticism there is rationality in mysticism there is bada there is bitanda not bitanda but jalpa and tarka mysticism has its own logical impulse that's why uh, i said that, that i i said that means i i uh, i mean refer to because i refer to motilal when i can, i said that mystical reality is said to be beyond language and the mystics experience is uncategorizable even uncategorizable that words cannot describe so i think i think uh, thank you srinivasan ji thank you very much sir very kind of you my thank next you. question is how do you clarify mysticism versus clairvoyance and i i cannot answer this question sir <laughs> because i am i believe in mysticism i cannot answer sorry <laughs> yeah okay okay yeah thank you thank you yes lakshman any more i think these are the questions of any any questions pilamar ki nahi actually sir eta to pilamanu ko pai hi karchi pilamanu jodi ko ta asu bare kichu pochar kona pilamanu odia re pochar galsin bari pila pochari ba dorkar ne ne kala agot kotha agot kotha agot kotha jodi pilamane achanti jodi pochar nanti ठीक अच्छे मोर गोटे प्रश्न रही गला Yes, what are the Swami Milan Pacharya got a kata? You said that Buddha did not uh, believe in the authority of the Vedas in order to be rational, um, in order to be pragmatic, um, and in order to be human. 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 So does it imply that those who believe in the authority of the Vedas, um, they are uh, not rational, not pragmatic, not even to them? Sir, it's a good question. तबे आई विल रेफर टू तिब्बत रेफर द कांसेप्ट ऑफ विपासना जदीओ सेटा लेटर बुद्धिज्म माने तिब्बतियन बुद्धिज्म सेटा को एक्सेप्ट कर चंदी किंतु इट ऑलवेज फॉलोड बाय फॉलोड फ्रॉम आई मीन इट इज ऑलवेज इट इज रिड्यूस्ड फ्रॉम बुद्ध इटसेल्फ एवं सेतिले से माने कहो जदी विपासना रे विपासना जोटा रही जी दी माइंड्स आर नॉट आवर हम मनटा हमर नो दिस इज नॉट मिस्टिसिज्म this is this is mm-hmm. this this should not be irrational ebong jete bele eya kouchanti je in vipassana in the state of vipassana we do simple things 
स्थिर चित्त स्थिर मन स्थिर स्थिर अध्याय आम सब जिते प्रकार अभाव जिते प्रकार असुविधार सम्मुखीन हो ना कहीं विपासना जड़े जदि कै से तार मन को तार तन को स्थिर कर रखिकी से निश्चित भाव गोटे सुंदर डिशन नहीं पार से कौन कौन वी मे थिंक दैट दे आर इन विपासना इन माई थट इन माई आईडिया इन माई फिलिंगस इन माई एक्सपीरिएस इन माई डिजायर इन माई लंगिंग एंड इन माई पेसन तेल्ले विपासना एक्चुअली Uh, actually, the, uh, a connection between contemplation and mystical experience. एवं अपन जो दी अरिस्टोटल को देखिए सर निकोमेकिया ने ठीक से अरिस्टोटल ये contemplation शब्द ठाकुर कौन से दी युडोमोनिया? हम्म युडोमोनिया हाँ युडोमोनिया ना इट इज अ स्टेट ऑफ contemplation एवं contemplation कोठु मिली हो दिस इज द हाईएस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ हैप्पीनेस कहाँ पाकर है अच्छी जो मने टीचर जो मने शिक्षक हो not in the king but in the teacher educators उधंकर से कथा विपासना कथा मत लगुचे जे रिलीजियस ट्रेडिशन रे ए विपासना शब्द ता किंतु गुटे बडो जागा अधिकार करछि एवं आपन सेल्फ अवेयरनेस ना कोन टेडा हां कोन विपासना ता गुटे सेल्फ अवेयरनेस ना कोन ना विपासना ता गुटे प्रकार माने कोन सेंट्रलिटी माने कोन कह जिवो माने वन काइंड ऑफ सेल्फ अवेयरनेस थ्रू ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन ना ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन थ्रू सेल्फ अवेयरनेस माने ना सेल्फ अवेयरनेस थ्रू ट्रांसफॉर्मेशन फ्रॉम द मिस्टिकल जर्नी एटा एटा कहिए हे पारे सर एवं सेम लाइन ऑफ सेम लाइन ऑफ थॉट आपण देखो तो क्रिश्चियन मिस्टिसिज्म रे इवन इफ सबटु भल लागला सर जते लो कहा जाउ छि एथि माने हमर मुंडको उपनिषद रे हम्म मुंडको उपनिषद तो कहा जाउ छि कस्मिन नु भगवो विज्ञाते सर्वम इदम विज्ञातम भवति इति माने को व्हाट इज दैट बाय बोल कथा पता लगे से सेटा तो अछि सेटा फिलोसोफी के रेफर कर आछि कोनटा जान ले म सब जानिबी सेटा अछि फिलोसोफी हां जान ले सब जानिबी एग्जैक्टली मु सेहि पय तो कहू छि सर जे फिलोसोफिकल ट्रेडिशन रे जते गुडा हमर इंडिपेंडेंट इंटेलेक्चुअल ट्रेडिशन अछि जदी बा सेठी हमे मिस्टिसिज्म रो गोटे धारणा पाउ किंतु दैट मिस्टिसिज्म इज सपोर्टेड बाय लॉजिक दैट मिस्टिसिज्म इज सपोर्टेड बाय अ वैलिड आर्गुमेंट हम्म एई जगह टाको मो जोटा बिके मोतीलाल प्रमाण करिक देखै छेंती एवं आपण सर आउटे जिंस देखंतु रिसेंटली ओटे डिस्कशन चलछि एबे नॉट रिसेंटली मे बी इन इन 2001 और 2002 सेतेले मो जादवपुर पीएचडी करथले अरिंदम चक्रवर्ती ओटे भाषण देले जैन महंती आस्तेले सेठीके पहिले इनी वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी रे इस वेस्टर्न फिलोसफिकल सिविलाइजेशन रे गोटे अंधविश्वास रो वर्तमान भारी दूर व्यापी छि एटा कोन ना इंडियन फिलोसफी इज कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी इज टोटोलॉजी माने फिलोसफी मींस वेस्टर्न एवं इंडिया रे फिलोसफी बिले किछ नथिला जहा थिला मिस्टिसिज्म मिस्टिसिज्म किंतु जैन महंती अरिंदम चक्रवर्ती वृंदा डालमिया जीबी सो एई माने वेस्टर्न सोसाइटी रे जते बेले जाई इंडियन फिलोसफी को पॉपुलराइज करछन एबे रिसेंटली हमरो सिंह साहब अछनते वेदांत से ता बलराम सिंह ए माने किंतु एई धारणाटा को भूल बोली प्रमाणित करछन जे इंडियन फिलोसफी इज रियली फिलोसफिकल वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी इज नॉट नॉट एट ऑल फिलोसफिकल एना जदी एक कथा हेई थाए ये तो बड़ा इंटरेस्टिंग कथा है जदी बहुत इंटरेस्टिंग कथा है टोटोलॉजिकल जदी वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी टोटोलॉजिकल हैला इंडियन फिलोसफी कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी हैला तल तो केड़े बढ़िया कथा तमने वेस्टर्न फिलोसफी जहां कोई एग्जैक्टली टोटोलॉजी टोटोलॉजिकल माने दिस इज एम्प्टी नथिंग एवं इंडियन फिलोसफी जदी कॉन्ट्राडिक्टरी हैला ताले इंडियन फिलोसफी पॉजिटिव समथिंग नॉट एम्प्टी नथिंग नथिंग जो भी कर्मफल रे विश्वास हुए माने जणे आ ताळो गछ लगेले ताळो ही फळिबो किंतु हमें चाहु छु ताळो गछ लगेले ना मोर काम दिने बाथरूम लगेले एग्जैक्टली 
सही जगह टा मुझे प्रमाण करियो को चाहूँ ची एवं एक्सेप्टेंस ऑफ ऑथरिटी माने वैदिक ऑथरिटी एवं मोतिलाल कौन कहेले मिस्टी से जिम बुझी बात को गले अम्मे आर्गुमेंट रा कंटेंट टा को बुझी हो पड़े ट्राई टू अंडरस्टैंड द कंटेंट ऑफ द आर्गुमेंट जेमिति सर साधारण कथा गोटे पिता रक्षन्ती को मारे स्वामी रक्षन्ती जो गना बर्धक्य पुत्र रक्षन्ती नचनारी स्वतंत्रता फेमिनिस्ट माने कहले मनुकु ये गुटे एंटी फेमिनिस्ट कथा अरे बाबू स्वाधीनता एवं स्वतंत्रता मध्ये तफात अछि भारत वर्ष 1947 रे स्वाधीनता पाइला 1950 रे स्वतंत्रता पाइला से कहउछ अच्छा झियटीए कुमारी अवस्था रे ता बाप यदि ता बाप ता तार यदि रक्षणा वक्षण करे पिता रक्षन्ती को मारे ता मानेटा कोन झियटार स्वतंत्रता नाही भर्ता रक्षन्ती जो बना स्वामी यदि जौवन अवस्था रे तार विवाह परे तार रक्षणा वक्षण कला सेटा कोन तार स्वतंत्रता नाही तो वी हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड को कॉन्टेक्स्ट ये ठीक ये ठीक रक्षन्ती होची प्रोटेक्शन दवा कथा प्रोटेक्शन कथा के जे 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 प्लस सिक्योरिटी अछि से कोन स्वतंत्र न एग्जैक्टली अछि सराउंडेड बाय सिक्योरिटी ओके यार यदि कोई भी स्वतंत्र न मु यदि कोई भी एई घर भीतर मु स्वाधीन आई एम फ्री इन दिस इन दिस रूम आई एम नॉट फ्री ना आई वुड आई वुड आई वुड को सर रिलेटेड दैट इज इंपोर्टेंट को सर इन इन दैट कॉन्टेक्स्ट ओनली बीबीके मोतीलाल डॉक्टर कम्स इन जे Indian philosophy was Indian philosophy was an inverted court mm. was criticized to be no philosophy at all mm. because that is uh, among many other things it is a bundle of uh, mystical uh, assertions. Mm. But in another sense of mysticism, there is a celebrated form of mysticism in the West. Mm. Of course, and, and the mysticism is there in India in in a figurative sense. Sir, they are so mysticism. There are Sir, Samanakara mysticism ah. starts from Greek civilization, Democritus, mm. Thales. प्रभाकर प्रभाकर मीमांसक तार लॉजिकल आर्गुमेंट दे की प्रमाण कर चंती दिस सेल्फ इज नॉट कॉन्शसनेस एंड व्हाइल कॉन्शसनेस इज इट्स सेल्फ लुमिनस द सेल्फ इज नॉट हम्म इटा कोन मिस्टिसिजम वाला हम्म तले एई आर्गुमेंट हमें जते बेले न्याय पडु छु पीके मुखोपाध्याय सर व्याप्ति पंचक गोटिए वर्ष धरी पांचटा सूत्र पढी चंती व्याप्ति विशिष्ट पक्ष धर्मता ज्ञान अनंतम अनुमान जते लोग कहउ छी ए व्याप्ति विशिष्ट माने कोन याकू नहीं की hmm. याकू नहीं की इंडियन फिलोसफी रे गौतम एवं परवर्ती काल रे गंगेश आलोचना करी जति गुटे गुटे सूत्र पढिले बुझा जिवो जे लॉजिकल इंपल्स टा कोठी अछि आमे त्रिपदी युक्ति पढु छु अरिस्टोटल रो सिंबल त्रिपदी युक्ति प्रधान आश्रय वाक्य अप्रधान आश्रय वाक्य सिद्धांत किंतु पंचावय बिन जेटा परार्थन मान क्षेत्र रे लागिला प्रतिज्ञा उदाहरण हेतु उपनय निगमन पंचावय बिन अरिस्टोटल सीधा चोरी करी नै गेलो हम्म तले एई गुडा ही रिसर्च करिवार जागा सर मु म छात्र छात्री ती जे माने अछंती से मानन को गोटे सजेशन देबी जे एई गुडा ही रिसर्च करिवार जागा भारतीय परंपरा भारतीय दर्शन शास्त्र रे जहा अछि पाश्चात्य सभ्यता रे सेया नाही आ सर मोर गुटे बडो रिजर्वेशन अछि एबे पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म ने की आई नेवर बिलीव इन पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म अच्छा मॉडर्निज्म सर मॉडर्निज्म के से चला वेयर डस मॉडर्निज्म एंड हां सही सेंस रे कांट रो जते बा में पढु इमानुएल कांट रो 3 3 डिग्रीज ऑफ नॉलेज कांट इज ए पोस्ट मॉडर्निस्ट कांट रो लेक्चर्स ऑन एथिक्स बदि कोही जदि केही पढिबे कांट को कहिबे ये ही इज हार्ड क्लोर पोस्ट मॉडर्निस्ट कांट इज ए मॉडर्निस्ट कलकत्ता यूनिवर्सिटी रे जने प्रोफेसर अछंती सोमनलाल दत्तगुप्त पोस्ट मॉडर्निज्म रे भारी जने विशारद मोर तांग संग रे युक्ति हला तरे मु कहले देयर इज देयर इज नो एंड टू मॉडर्निटी अपनो पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी पोरे केबे टू आरंभ ला मते कोन तो तापर मु कहि बे मॉडर्निटी केबे सल्ला हम सब आमे हवरमा डेरिडा क्रिकेटर समस्त को पुरजु रोटी 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 हिमसेल्फ डज नॉट बिलीव इन डज नॉट बिलीव इन मॉडर्निटी सॉरी पोस्ट मॉडर्निटी मिरर ऑफ मोस्ट ऑफ देम मोस्ट मोस्ट ऑफ देम हैव कम फ्रॉम द फील्ड ऑफ लिटरेचर हां आओ 
आउ सर आउ गोटे बडो कथा जो हम देखु छी एबे मते लागु छी प्रज्ञा बते धर्म ऊपर कहिबो ए धर्म नै कि सर गोटे बडो बडो प्रॉब्लम आछि एबे नो फिलोसोफिकल कम्युनिटी धर्म रो 1200 टा डेफिनेशन अछि 1200 टा डेफिनेशन गोटे धर्म सर गोटे एमो बदे या हमरो पाइछु एठी कौटिल्य अर्थशास्त्र कहु छी से भुली गली से शास्त्र श्लोकटा कोन सर नच धर्म अपधर्म स अविरोधात सुद धर्म स धर्म सत्य विक्रम जे धर्म अन्य धर्म को विरोध करे सेटा धर्म नहि हम्म एवं एवं एटा कोहा जाउ छी जे धर्म रो 10टा अर्थ 1200टा मीनिंग अछि को कॉन्टेक्स्ट रे कोटा को धर्म कोहाउ छी युधिष्ठिर को जते बेले भीष्म एठी कहिले 24टा धर्म रो डेफिनेशन दे छथि प्रथम डेफिनेशन ता हो छी हाउ टू बी अ ट्रेचरर विश्वास घात केमती करियो हम्म शांति पर बोले हम्म ताले 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 धर्म माने ओरिजिन संस्कृत लैंग्वेज गुडा को हमें संस्कृत भाषा रे ही बुझिबा दरकार जेते बेले सेटा को हमें ट्रांसलेशन कर दोछु द ओरिजिनल मीनिंग इज लॉस्ट एईटा ही हमरो बडो समस्या हवे सर हां ठीक है अच्छा नाउ फ्रांसिस एंड लक्ष्मण सर सेवन सेवन पोरे कहिबे आमे तो दायित्व रे गेलु किछ पचाइ पालबु ने ओ सर नाउ इट इज योर टर्न हां सर ए क्वेश्चन बाय रघुनाथ प्रधान uh what is the relation between the mysticism and a human being see a human being only a human being is a only a human being can be a mystic mystic hoba pai manu manisa darka manisa na le mystic hi paribani ebang mu already eta pad mo slide re mu kahi chi who is a mystic jete bele mu kahili the mystic is a person who believes in a supernatural power ebang mystic knows all languages आ लैंग्वेज जानिया कोले मनीष दरकार जने मनीष ही केवल मिस्टिक हे परबो किंतु तार मिस्टिकल एक्सपीरियंस टा केबे भी कैटेगरी भीतर आसी बने केबे भी ताकु गुटे गुटे कैटेगरी बा गुटे कैरेक्टर भीतर आनी हो बने एवं लिंग तार भगवान प्रकाश भी नहीं ने भगवान मिस्टिकली भी नहीं निश्चय भगवान कोटी अछन सर कविता जो माने मिस्टिक हेबे से माने जे दार्शनिक हेबे एटा भी नु हो नागार्जुन मिस्टिक ना नै सर शून्यवादी मिस्टिक मु कहि परिबे नै नागार्जुन सर नागार्जुन सुन नागार्जुन शून्यवादी हिसाब रे परिगणित तांकु मिस्टिक कहियो माने ये मतलब लागुनी आई कैनॉट कंसीडर नागार्जुन एज ए मिस्टिक नै ए कंटीन्यूअस ए कंटीन्यूअस ए कंटीन्यूअस ए चतुर्थ कोटि बिनेन मुक्त ता ता इज अ नेगेटिवली कोला किंतु सर कोन ताले सर 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 जे माने नो सोल नो सोल जुटा में बुद्धिज्म रे पड़ जा हम कोन ता को मिस्टिक बिली कहि परियो हम जान नेम से तो पते सर एबडा बडो डिफिकल्ट प्रश्न आ गुटे प्रश्न आसी दाज मिस्टिसिज्म हैज सर साइंटिफिक बेसिस हम पढु छी लक्षण दाज मिस्टिसिज्म हैज साइंटिफिक बेसिस देखो प्रीति स्वाई तमे निश्चय जने स्टूडेंट भलो प्रश्न टी पचार छ किंतु देखो साइंटिफिक बेसिस माने कोन बुझु छ मु एक सिंपल एग्जांपल देबी हिस्ट्री इज द रूट साइंस इज द मीडियम फिलोसोफी इज द फ्रूट इतिहास होची मूळो मूळो टाकु परीक्षा निरीक्षण करिया पई विज्ञान दरकार एवं दर्शन होची तार फल माने इतिहास एवं विज्ञान नथिले दर्शन होबनि तमे मिस्टिसिज्म टाकु जदि दार्शनिक चिंता धारा रे आनो ताले निश्चय एटा गुटे साइंटिफिक बेसिस अछि काहे कि युक्ति करिवा वैध युक्ति करिवा दैट टू माने प्रतिज्ञा हेतु उदाहरण उपनय निगमन पंचावय बे न्याय को देखि जदि हम युक्ति करिवा ताले दैट इज ए साइंस हम जदि डिडक्टिव लॉजिक जे सबु कुआ गुडा कला हां जे गोटी नंबर प्रोन डिडक्टिव लॉजिक जदि पढिवा सेट दैट इज ए काइंड ऑफ वैलिड आर्गुमेंट दैट इज आल्सो आर्गुमेंट करिवाटा तर्क करिवाटा इज ए इज ए इज ए फीचर्स ऑफ साइंस साइंस माने एटा नो 
जे हाइड्रोजन प्लस ऑक्सीजन कंबाइंड इनटू वाटर परीक्षा रे परीक्षा गारर जे की परीक्षा करतले मिलि गला मते साइंस रे सेस साइंस रे गोटे लिमिटेशन अछि किंतु वैध युक्ति रो लिमिटेशन नाही नसी कयो जदि चाहत हो एमटी सर इन द फील्ड ऑफ फिलोसफी वी हैव मिस्टिसिज्म हम व्हाइल वी एनालाइज डिस्कोर्सेस सर इटा इटा तो इटा इटा सुंदर करी कहे वो फिलोसोफिकल फैटरनिटी भीतर है वा फिलोसोफिकल डिस्कशन कोई ना हाँ इन द फील्ड ऑफ लिटरेचर इन द लिट इन द फील्ड ऑफ लिटरेचर देर इज आल्सो मिस्टिसिज्म हाँ जब देवड़े उदाहरण देखे सेम देवड़े उदाहरण दे जाए करी वो तो ने तार तारों प्रेमिका प्रेमिका सर आइंस्टाइन आसी कि रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर को भेटी थी जेते जेते वडे से जो अच्छा कर थ्योरी ऑफ इनडिटरमिनेसी इज दैट साइन ऑफ मिस्टिसिज्म सर आइंस्टाइन जेते वडे आसी कि रविंद्रनाथ टैगोर को साक्षात करले हम रविंद्रनाथ कर जो इमोशनल अटैचमेंट कवि प्रकाशित जो कवि भाबरे से प्रकाशित करले सेटा साइंस द्वारा प्रमाण करि पल्ले नि एवं जेते वडे सर आमे एबे कहु छु जे जे मिस्टिसिज्म माने विज्ञान जते बेले फेल करूची हम्म दर्शन बा मिस्टिसिज्म सेटी आरंभ हो जे हम्म एवं ए कथाटा आइंस्टाइन रविंद्रनाथ संग रे जते साक्षात करे प्रमाण करिसन हम्म विश्वास से मिलई वस्तु तर्के बहु दूर भारी साधारण कथा टी और किंतु किंतु से विश्वास टा कोन सर इज इट ए इज इट ए बायस्ड बायस्ड बिलीफ is it a superficial belief or is it a argumentative it is supported by history history aw itihas ta kon ki sir history of philosophy of history till today the sun was rising in the east so we have a belief that it will rise in the east tomorrow also sir epistemology re gote bado problem achi problem of induction agamikali surya udav hoday hobani ebong pancha ta argument dei ki praman kar diya hai ji agamikal surya udav hobani This is also this is also a kind of argument proving mm -hmm. the sun will not rise tomorrow. Hmm. Can that for you like some? Another question. The bottom bottom question is bolle jane. I have asked you what is mystical experience? Can we authenticate a person mystical experience using scientific method or inquiry? I'll request wow. Mr. Bata Krishnan. I'll request to go through the article by William James, the varieties of religious experience. You go through that. The first phase will will uh, describe everything. A science is not allowed. Like that, I can't do it. Like that, mystical journey, I can't do. But science, as you say, that's sorry, that's not limitation. Like that, limitation. Like that. So, if mysticism is not there, you can't do it. How is there any question? Any other question? Like that? Sir, yes, sir. Another question. What is the difference between faith and mystic? Look, faith, faith is a subjective expression. Mystic, mystic, mystic. Though it is subjective, but it has an objective attitude. तनो फेथ एवं मिस्टिसिज्म मित्र बहुत तफात अछि फेथ हो जी सब्जेक्टिव किंतु मिस्टिसिज्म रो इंटेंशन हो जी ऑब्जेक्टिव जदीओ सेरी सब्जेक्टिविटी अछि बट सब्जेक्टिविटी इज नॉट देयर टू सैटिस्फाई योर डिजायर सब्जेक्टिविटी इज देयर टू सैटिस्फाई द ऑब्जेक्टिविटी जोटा अरविंदंकर कथाटा म कहली सेटा जदी टिके लास्ट रे जदी जे बाटाकृष्ण जे अछंती से जदी सेटा को टिके देखंते जोटा को म अरविंद कथा कहि छि अरविंद जहा कहि छंती जे सब्जेक्टिविटी एंड ऑब्जेक्टिविटी आर नॉट इंडिपेंडेंट रियलिटी दे आर द बीइंग थ्रू कॉन्शियसनेस लुकिंग एट सब्जेक्ट ऑन द ऑब्जेक्ट एंड द सेम बीइंग ऑफरिंग इटसेल्फ टू इट्स ओन कॉन्शियसनेस एज ऑब्जेक्ट टू द सब्जेक्ट सो टुडे सर लेट आफ्टरनून सर गुड मिनट गुड मिनट सर मोर को नेट रेट की गंडुली सर गुड मिनट सर आस सुना जाउ छी एबे सर नेट रे टिके गनो सुना जाउ छी ओके यस यस ओके सो टुडे द लेट आफ्टरनून टर्न्ड इनटू अर्ली इवनिंग एंड अर्ली इवनिंग
turn into late evening <laughs> and in the process we find ourselves elevated intellectually very much and this is due to the two eminent uh, philosopher speakers professor mohanta and professor pari who had been kind enough to spare so much of time and so much of love love is mysticism so they have distributed so much of mysticism so much of love among the participants here in this seminar webinar that we are very very grateful to them and we would expect that whenever we need in this philosophy forum they would uh, somehow make themselves available with uh, lots of love lots of philosophic material we thank, thank them you, very much on behalf of uh, bd college and on behalf of icp and delhi sir just and put a minute I, 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 hmm. put a minute for you i am also uh, thankful to professor das uh, professor gp das uh, who thank you to be my revered teacher during my post graduation days in nutkal university later on i found actually actually i i found the foundation of philosophical understanding in utkal university later on i developed it in jadavpur university with so many stalwarts like pk mukhopadhyay like pranav kumar sen like kalyan kalyan sangupta hiranmay banerji sefali maitra and because of this uh, for so many so many teachers in utkal university like professor das professor mahapatra uh, professor panigrahi andra patnayak jayanti jalbe Uh, because of them what i am today it's because of them only and uh, i always pay my homage to all my teachers and also my special thanks to lakshman lakshman uh, kahi so ke ki amar ji to amar bhai aaj gote area re gote area re kaam kare pe sujog milela ebong kichhi non non you grow and glow you grow and glow and uh, scale more and more heights thank you thank you very much thank you. i also thank uh, lakshman sanchez uh, to have invited me again today to be in the chair i am very happy uh, to execute that assignment and thank i you. hope the rest of the days ahead to be successful uh, deliberation thank you thank you sir thank you thank you sir and uh, thank you everyone for your cooperation for your guidance uh, tomorrow we will meet in the same time at 4 pm thank you thank you all thank you khali sethi ta cha delo nahi biscuit delo nahi kichhi delo nahi sethi me tike de dhanyawad bhala ki dabo na tike sorry bhi hoibo nahi sir lakhman mote icpr apan koi dele to bhau kon koi chaakhar kon koi adhika se sorry boli koibar kichhi mane na thili bhi कोन मु देई पाइल ने बोली अरे तमे स्विगी करी के पठो न ऑनलाइन रे हम गो चा पीवा किछ न ले सेदी सेदी कप ता थोई देई त न तो कोन आपन समर्पण कर ली बोली चा भी करनो किछ नहीं सेदी के लाई आ एक पी ए जस्ट पांच मिनट के ग्रुप पी लु भाभी दे लु भाभी जे आपन मान देई पाल लु सर ए माने निजे कर पी से ली नहीं सर ए माने निजे निजे स्वाध्याय कर पकेले तो हम जिम देखेलो ने मु भी देखेई नहीं मु भी पी से ली ने भीतर Thank you very much. Oh, we will meet again thank tomorrow. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Lakshman. Even our team, co. This is very Francis. Even our principal, co. Our department. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening to all of you. Thank you.